As you can see, we have Mark Sargent, and I really appreciate Mark Sargent taking the time to come and uh, visit and uh, speak on my channel. It's a, a long time, basically overdue for this to happen. We've spoken before here and there, but yeah. no actual um, live stream or podcast together. So this is going to be uh, something good. Hopefully, um, we're going to get into a lot of topics, but we're going to, of course, the main topic, of course, is Flat Earth. And again, thanks so much, Mark, for uh, joining in and and uh, welcome. Happy to be here and thank you so much for inviting me. Sure thing, absolutely. We're going to talk about a lot of things that have been taking place recently. The Jimmy Kimmel um, fiasco with the uh, with the troll. We'll get into that. Yeah. And uh, but first off, I want to ask you is you know basically starting off you know you know from the very start your childhood and your uh, outlook in, in, in life and the whole uh, the whole aspect of how you got involved with flutters. I'm sure there's a lot out there that know, maybe some don't, just wanted to just, you know, run through that real quickly before we get into the meat and potatoes of uh, subject. Sure. My childhood was a little bit unusual because I grew up in an island northwest of Seattle, Washington, just, just below the San Juans and just below uh, Canada, basically. And it was a very rural environment, but we could see Seattle from our, you know, from our island. So civilization was not very far away. And uh, I it was a very sheltered life. And so I didn't believe in any conspiracies at all. I didn't think that people ever lied, to be honest, until I got to university and I saw Oliver Stone's opus, you know, his JFK in the theater, that was the first conspiracy thing I'd, I'd ever watched that even broached uh, conspiracies for me. You know, this predated the internet by a few years. And all of a sudden I re and I saw it during a packed house and I realized it's like, wow, you know, people, people in positions of authority do lie and there are reasons why. And then I started kind of learning the, the rules of power slowly but surely. And over the course of the next oh, 20 years, I had an opinion on just about every conspiracy you can think of because it's like, why not? You know, you have the news, you have the mainstream news, and then you have what else is out there. You know, the, the stories that people don't talk about. And I know there's a lot of people, you know, friends and family of everybody that's listening that believe that whatever happens, you know, from God's lips to NBC or Fox or CNN or whatever, and that's the truth. And whatever you see on, on the news is the truth. And I had to learn how to build a filter to that. And I had looked at enough conspiracies. I was I was starting to get bored with them. It's like oh, JFK and 9/11 and the moon landing in Pearl Harbor and and so on and so on and so on and so on. I I had literally an opinion on everything. Some I liked, some I didn't like. And then just in the the summer of 2014, I got bored to the point where it's like, all right, what haven't I looked at? And Flat Earth just happened to show up in the corner of my screen in, in YouTube and it's like, okay, why not? It's not on my bucket list. Let's let's, you know, turn this thing out and and see what's what's there. And I fit, figured I could just shoot this thing down in a weekend. It was the biggest mistake of my life because <laughs> it just never, it never would end. I kept trying to to hammer the thing out. I kept kept trying to disprove it like everybody else in Flat Earth. I became a Flat Earther because I tried to destroy it. And because I hated it like everybody else does. I, mean, well, I still get up mornings. I mean, literally, I get up every morning trying to kill Flat Earth and every morning I fail. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, uh, so for, for about nine months from uh, summer of 2014 all the way to the beginning of 2015. And then I just woke up. I had that Jerry Maguire moment where I just said, you know what? I'm going the other way with this. And I decided to put a series of videos out on YouTube. Never had made a YouTube video. You know, my YouTube account was out there, but very little activity whatsoever. And I called it Flat Earth Clues. And it was a series of very, very short videos. And the reason why they were short is because when you're brand new to YouTube, you can't even make long videos. You have to make them less than 15 minutes. And put them out there and thought, okay, well, some, some academic's going to shoot me down. There was a problem I couldn't answer, which was, okay, why can't I prove the globe anymore? And mm. over the period of the next six months, I just had this wave after wave of people contacting me. Uh, the, the average person on the street and saying, wow, this is really interesting. I want to know more. Mainstream media going, wow, why has no one ever talked about this? I want to know more. And then subject matter experts getting a hold of me from all branches of the military and engineers and pilots and air traffic controllers. And they're all saying the same thing, which is like, you know what? Not that crazy. Not that crazy at all. 
And that was, you know, 2015 and started this whirlwind of, of things, you know, things I, if literally, if I live long enough to write an autobiography, it's going to be called unsolicited. I didn't have to do anything. It just kept coming to me, you know, being like a publisher. It's like, Hey, you want to turn your clues into a book? It's like, sure. Do I have to do anything? No. Uh, TFR. Hey, you want to turn your thing into a, a weekly radio show? Sure. Why not? Uh, and so on and so on and so on to where 2019, you know, we just finished it up and I did, I did speaking things in what, eight cities and five or six countries. And I didn't have to, I didn't have to solicit any of them and, and to where two days ago, and I know we'll get to it. Uh, we were on Jimmy Kimmel, <laughs> yeah. go figure American mainstream late night television. And, and also the commercial you've been on. Um, oh yeah, I'm sorry, I got. Yeah, I forgot. Totally forgot about that. You been, yeah, uh, I have to remind you. You've been involved with so many things. I got to remind you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, um, I did. I was called. In fact, it was really weird because I just got back from the um, New Zealand Flat Earth Conference, which which I was a speaker at. And I get home, and that was not. Uh, you know, I'd not done much work out there. And I get back, and literally as soon as I get back. Uh, an Australian online gambling company contacted me said, Hey, how would you like to come down to Melbourne and shoot a commercial? It's like, what do I have to do? They go, Oh, you just have to hold a phone up <laughs> for, <laughs> for a whole what, entire day and uh, we'll pay you. And it's like, Hey, you know, can you be here in 10 days? I mean, it was really, really short notice. It's like, okay. <laughs> so I flew down there and spent a week in Melbourne and lived in an apartment and uh had had fun and and to where yeah and then then they ran that just i mean that was a national television spot in australia and they put it on billboards and buses and in airports and it's like oh wow and that was really cool i was the, it was the first flat earth official endorsement um but the the neat thing about that was is that we didn't I, you know if, if you saw the big campaign you know it was called foolproof the big campaign had different Americans in it, like American beauty queens and American po protesters and stuff like that. But they were all played by Australians. I was the only American that was actually flown in for this. And wow. the reason why is because we had members working in that company. They didn't have to use me. They could have created a flat earther out of thin air if they wanted to. But they said, hey, if we're going to do that, why not bring in, you know, the real thing? And so it was great. I got to meet, you know, some, some flat earthers down there and it was, it was a lot of fun. So yeah, it's been a, a wild, wild ride so far. And if 2020, as of two days ago, what just happened is any indication of what that's going to be. I mean, come on, it's an election year already, which is going to be super, super weird. Uh, I, I have high hopes for, for what's going to happen to the flat earth community. Well, I want to thank you, Mark, because my very first video presentation on Flat Earth included your work. Oh, thank you. And yeah, absolutely. And uh, I forgot the name of you. You mentioned this one crater on the moon. It was out. It was named after um, a. I believe. Oh, it was oh, oh, um, oh! It was. Uh, it's a Barani. Little, uh, yeah, Barani. Um, it's a. It's a. He's an Iranian philosopher from a thousand years ago yeah al Biruni. al Biruni. yeah that's it and I'll, that's it i'll never forget that because that was one thing i really spotlighted because he was basically a, a flat earth and they named a crater um after him uh, you know a moon crater after him yeah so i found that very fascinating and uh you know it's like this whenever um well let me just back up here and say this sure. uh, you know you, you you mentioned everything you've been through it's you know for the you know rounded up and you're talking about all these experiences. You never imagined that it would snowball into where you are today. I mean, from 2014 to where where it's uh, be, where it is now, right? You can't dream of that taking place. Oh but no, one thing for sure. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh well, no, not at all. As a matter of fact, um, I'm collecting actually magazine covers on my coffee table right now. Uh, we were on the cover, for example, of uh, Newsweek, Popular Science. Uh, and Skeptic Magazine all in one year, all in 2019. And then, you know, we the, the trailer for that was the cover of National Geographic back in the 2015, but that was basically the war on science, the beginning of that. And then we were part of a television special that they did. And then uh, uh, we were on CBS Good Morning with Jane Pauley. I mean, yeah, the, there's so much media has, has been generated because of Flat Earth. We've, we've become kind of media spoiled. 
yeah. where I, you know, I, I kind of joke with some of the people. I remember when, when Jaron was complaining that Newsweek was picking on him. <laughs> It's like, dude, if that's the biggest thing you got to complain about, you don't have a lot to complain about because yeah. there's all sorts of people out there that are just dying to get any sort of media attention because media is really, really fragmented right now. Yeah. And we are, we, they just come to us. They just keep coming to us. Uh, in fact, you want to have some fun, have your, uh, have your listeners do a look uh, at the end of 2019, kind of the retrospective, set the filter to one month. The most interesting stories of 2019, you know, just about every list that you can see, we're in there. Why not? Of course, we're the most interesting story of 2019 and 2018. And by the way, to all the trolls that may be listening, doesn't it bother you that we're still here? <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. in 2015, they were making all these videos, oh, Flat Earth's dead, RIP, case closed. It's like, yeah. Really? You know, I, I said that's... that, Mark. I said that in the beginning when I started making Flat Earth videos, I said, look, you know, of course, I, I looked into it a, a tremendous amount of time looking into it before I, I put my foot in the water and actually produced videos on it. But I said to myself, you know, if this flat earth is, is, is false, it's not true, it's going to go away rather quickly. And sure. obviously it hasn't. It's just built up. Another thing I want to, I'm going to be very uh, transparent and, and very blunt mm -hmm. uh, for anybody out there listening. And like you said, Mark, that says, oh, but Mark's been on mainstream uh, media. He's a shill. Look, right. if we talk amongst ourselves only, we don't get this out there. How is it going to grow? So oh, absolutely. We have to we have to really really think long and hard before we we throw uh, things uh, these words around. And, and you know, I hate to say it, but the truth is this: the less people do, the more they complain about people like me, yourself, who's done a tremendous amount of work. Put your neck out there and uh, taking all the criticism while they sit back and throw popcorn at people like you and me, Mark. Uh, yeah, yeah, armchair quarterbacks, of course. Um, and look, there's some old sayings. The the, the most popular of it is uh, is that um, it, all press is good press. But that actually, I think, originated from the the saying that even bad press is free. And what I'm trying to tell people is like, look, you don't know how difficult it is to get it. I, I've used this analogy many times, which is when any branch of the media takes takes shots at us, they're basically just shooting wooden arrows into a bonfire, which is, you know, from a distance, it looks like there's a lot of stuff happening. There's a lot of activity, but you're really just making the fire bigger. Uh, and it's so difficult to break into media in, in any capacity. And we've hit just the full spectrum. I mean, look, look back at when, you know, back uh, two years ago when LeBron James said flat earth on international television, yeah. you know, he, he actually said flat earth. We could, you don't have, you don't understand the, the, the power, the, the me, the marketing power of that. We could have gone to him and offered him a briefcase with $5 million and he still probably wouldn't have said it because of, you know, his reputation, right? He said it for free. Yeah. And Kyrie Irving, even... Kyrie Irving was involved with that. So they were going back and forth and kind of jabbing each other about it. Yeah. But the thing is, the key word, it's mentioned. And, it's mentioned. Uh, yeah. And that's the huge thing is getting out there. So again, not to be uh, uh, redundant. Uh, uh, well, no, no. I, let, let me let me throw one more thing yeah. in there. Ahead, it, this, this will kind of, kind of solidify it, which is, when you bring up a topic on your to your audience, in fact, I don't even care about the host. When I'm talking to these different groups in mainstream, I don't care about the host. I give a rat's ass <laughs> about what the host thinks. Yeah. What I care about is the viewers. Yes. Because I know the host is never going to change his or her mind while I'm talking to them because, look, that's part of their network. It'd be amazing if they actually did. Now, I've caught some off guard, sure. But it's the people at home watching because, yeah, but who knows? Maybe 99 out of 100, I'm not going to get. But there's going to be a few of them. Absolutely, they're going to look into it. You know, they're they're going to think it's so crazy that they're going to start looking into it. And that's how we get them. Because what flat earthers keep forgetting is that that's how we got into it. We got into it because we somebody brought it up. It's like, oh, this is the craziest thing ever. Uh, and like I put in um, the the book I just wrote, um, which I, I I thanked Amy Adams, the actress. Because she went, you know, in some of her different Hollywood parties, she went off on tears and was going after us. And people forget, and I learned this from producers, it doesn't matter whether you love a topic or you hate a topic, as long as you're passionate one way or another about a topic, because people will pay attention. In fact, most often, people will pay attention if you hate something more than you love it. It's mm. like, oh, that's a great thing, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. But, you know, it's like, oh, flat earth, it's, I hate them so much. It's like, really? Click, 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 click. You know, you, you've got them. 
So sorry. yeah, and, and people are very divisive, of course, uh, online, you know, in public, you know, it, it, there's a lot of banter going on. I mean, I remember back, I think it was 2015 or 2016. There was actually a fist fight at a pizza parlor in Canada over debating over flatter. That's how sure. you know. That's how uh, people, you know, what it comes down to, I always say it's ego. Ego is the biggest enemy of truth and, and people want to be right. And it's just, it's every, really, go ahead, go ahead. every major YouTube channel at this point has covered flat earth and done at least one video. And they haven't just done it because they think it's interesting. They've done it because of what you just said, because it's polarizing. Yeah. Uh, love it or hate it, you can't, flat Earth is something you can't, well, rarely can ignore. They've done. They people look at the metrics. If you do a flat Earth video, yeah, you're going to get a boost in in thumbs up and thumbs down, but you're going to get a massive boost in comments. And comments count as part of the metric system in YouTube. Yeah, and you'll get like a 500 percent boost in comments for that video. And people and, and that spreads and the word got out some years ago. It's like, dude, if you want to get some hits, make a freaking flat earth video. And it's true, even today. You make it now, it's tougher to break in because YouTube has changed the algorithm somewhat. Yeah. But for three straight years, they were recommending us a lot. And um, and I don't know if you heard me say this before, but I, I think it bears repeating, which is uh, there was a great little article, it's out there, you can find it if you want, where there was a, a YouTube programmer who can't, you know, who was was done with programming at least for that company. And people asked him, it's like, hey, why do things get recommended? You know, on their side, recommended for you, you know, on the on the sidebar over there. And he said, I don't remember how many topics there are on YouTube, thousands, 10,000 10, topics at least, right? In YouTube. Mm -hmm. And he, out of all those topics, he picked one. And he said, well, if the average person that gets into Flat Earth watches 20 videos in a row, what do you think we're going to recommend? Yeah, <laughs> and that that pretty much said it all. It was like that's how I knew that the numbers kept you know kept trending and trending and trending to where you know YouTube turned off its own scoreboard, turned it off, and people say, "Oh, you're delusional to think it was because of flat Earth." I was like, "Are you kidding?" We were owning the scoreboard, yeah. absolutely owning relevant search results. We were the relevant search result. We were tracking better than anybody, tracking better than PewDiePie, tracking better than um, Lady Gaga. Tra In fact. I knew that how good we had gotten because we, when we hit 20.9 million relevant search results, Trump was at 20.8. That says something because Trump, as you know, is a controversial president. And I made a video literally calling, you can look back, it's in the middle of last year, it says Flat Earth catches the president of the United States. And two weeks later, that scoreboard was removed entirely to where you can't, it doesn't matter what topic you do on YouTube, there is no relevant search results anymore. It's gone. Yeah, you're welcome. Change the algorithm completely. Yeah, but, because of us. Yeah, and, and getting back to what you're saying, Mark, about this topic, um, besides flat earthers talking about it, like uh, such as yourself and, and myself and others, mm -hmm. and you know the the new I don't want to say the new uh, it's not the flat earth society per se, the disinfo site uh, claiming you know we're disc moving up and that's supposedly gravity, but you know none of us actually obviously believe uh, in any, any of that nonsense. But what right. I'm getting at is besides us it was like i think i believe correct me if i'm wrong i believe it was vsauce was the first one that really touched upon the flat earth and that that his channel i mean his his video on flat earth just rocketed so many oh yeah, yeah yeah he was he was the bane of my existence for the first year because he was <laughs> always at the top always always, yeah. always now he's a he's a huge channel to begin with he was probably the biggest channel to even broach the topic and but the, what he didn't cat well i mean not that he cared but what happened was there were so many other channels that got involved. But basically, yeah, if you have millions of channels, you know, I'm sorry, millions of subs like, you know, PewDiePie or Logan Paul or, or Shane Dawson or people like that, you know, you'll, you'll get up there. But if you are, you also get special treatment if you're a network, you know, ABC News, CBS, you know, like Jimmy Kimmel, top of the charts right now. He's going to stay top of the charts for a while. They give you the benefit of the doubt. The doubt and keep you up there. The Guardian at the top of the, um, uh, uh, you know, that's the BBC thing, Tech Insider. Verified channels that are verified with media credentials as well. Uh, but yeah, uh, Vsauce. Uh. And he still, in fact, he brought it up, he brought it up even um, just the other day on, um, I think it was H3. He brought it up, what, again, I'm, I'm sure people, you know, bother him about it all the time. Yeah, you know what, the thing is though, they're actually doing us a favor, bringing more attention to this topic, you know, so, mm -hmm. It's gonna backfire. Yeah, in the beginning, it's like, oh, these people are, you know, they're they're mocking flat earth. But again, you know, this is the truth, and uh, the truth will always come out in the end, and that's what it comes down to. Even um, people such as ourselves, the beginning, 
we were, you know, of course, with flat earth, the horrible stigma placed on it. Oh, you're so dumb. You think the earth is flat, of course. So we all been programmed. We all have this uncomfortable feeling first getting involved with flat earth. But once you understand, the more and more you understand, the more and more you grasp it, you become, when you become very comfortable, I have no problem bringing up to anybody. So someone yeah. in the streets will bring up politics. Well, I'll bring up flat earth, sure. you know, that type of thing. And I don't have a problem doing it because, and here's the thing is, the, and I said this before, the more and more people talk about out in the streets in public during like social gatherings at parties, it, it becomes less and less uh, uncomfortable for everybody. Absolutely. The, um, and I, I've got to bring up the documentary because, the, yes. you know, the, the Flat Earth community and, and what I predicted basically came true, which was the Flat Earth community was going to hate it and they did. But the rest of the world that saw it were very, very curious. And Marky, there you're frozen a bit. I think we lost Mark. Let's see what, let's see if he's going to, uh, I knew this because the what okay i'm sorry mark you froze for a bit on my side oh, anyway, did i yeah it's okay Here, now. Let, me get, let me kill i'm gonna kill my email and my other stuff so yeah all right, all right my back on. Seconds. yeah you're fine now okay. my so e so the um the documentary when i was sitting with people watching it the reason why they were so compelled is because it wasn't pure i'll use a drug reference here it wasn't pure uncut flat earth right it wasn't 100 pure it was a balance between science related people and us, you know, you know, professional scientists or astronauts or psychologists or whatever you want to, uh, whatever they threw in there and us. And so the audience was like, you know, listening to us was like, Oh God, it's too much. And it's like, Oh, okay. Okay. It's Neil Tyson. Oh, okay. It's an astronaut. And they'd be relieved. And, like, and so by the time they got, you know, to the end, it was this back and forth. They had sat through and they were engaged for the full hundred minutes. And there were a lot of people that got into it because of that that and of course um the the demographics because most people don't understand that if you're under the age of 30 the best media bang for your buck is is netflix it's cheap and there's a lot of stuff on there and kids don't have a lot of money so under so w w what really freaked science out was the u.gov survey that was released in 2017 which said that the 18 to 24 year olds over a third of them were skeptical of the globe that's what freaked people out that's when national oh. geographic contacted me and they were really really concerned and then just this year just a couple months ago i watched the um oh i think it was asmund gold i don't know if you saw it. did you ever see the asmund gold video i put out uh, actually i've not seen that one we, oh we, it's, it's brilliant so this guy you know <laughs> kids are so i said kids <laughs> getting old um <laughs> kids they don't even play their own video games nowadays a lot of them just watch recordings of people playing video games <laughs> Yes. or live streams they watch other people playing video games it's like okay I mean, yeah, i'm yeah. a gamer i i don't think i i mean it's not me i mean i, I like to either play or, or not do anything at all anyway so he was he's one of those gamers that also does things on the side he's constantly doing so he's got his picture up on the side and he decided to do a straw poll because somebody in chat was saying asking about flat earth you know because we're everywhere he goes fine he just did an impromptu chat and he has a lot of people watching him and he said, fine, let's do it. Is the earth actually flat? Yes or no? Ready? Go. I mean, it was that fast. And there were so many, there were thousands of people watching him. And he was tracking at about 100 and 120 votes a second. And at no point was flat earth losing to where by the time he gave up, <laughs> we were at 53%. And you remember that demographic is usually under 20 years old. Well, that makes sense because we were, as you track younger in the demographics, we, our numbers go up and up because, you know, why wouldn't younger people be more accepting? You know, the, the cement of their mind hasn't really hardened yet. Yeah. They're not like, you know, they've, ne they've never watched Apollo on television live. You know, they never watched any of the space shuttle missions. In fact, the space shuttle for a lot of them is just something that happened a long time ago. Yeah. And so, yeah, we just keep tracking more and more to where I, you know, I did not mind and I did it sort of deliberately in the book. I said, yeah, you don't have to worry about us going after the children. We already have them. Yeah. And I think it's important, you know, people are going to look back and look at these, the, the groundbreaking work when it comes to flat earth starting in 2015, again, with, uh, with you and, and several others that really pioneered it. And uh, you're, you know, basically people need to understand this. Well, why is Mark all over the media? Well, you you know, it's a snowball effect. You get on there, you do a great job presenting the flat earth, and people are saying, hey, we've seen that. We're going get to them, get them on. Why? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's it's really, really easy. People don't understand. Uh, the media is, uh, I, I hate to say this, but in case you're listening, they're lazy. 
And so if you have, first off, by that, I mean, if you put your phone number out there, it helps a lot. Yeah, <laughs> or your, 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 actual, <laughs> your actual name and your email. I mean, that's I, everyone that, that I did sh things for. That's how they contacted me. Yeah. They shot me an email. And the other thing is they watch, like you said, the snowball effect. So they watch a couple interviews and if they, they don't even watch 10 minutes of it, they watch it's like, yeah, he sounds okay. Let's get him. And it's kind of like the um, the the reason why, and I, I talked about this in the book, why Bill Nye gets as many gigs as he does. Why is he on television as much as, as he is? It's because he's available and he sounds somewhat credible about science, even though he is not a scientist in any way, shape, or form. He's not he good. is, the, peop, the, the producers realize that your average master's or PhD scientist, and I don't care if it's astrophysics or normal physics or any of the physical sciences, they're really, really dry. We all know this, right? When you the higher yeah. you higher you go on the nerd scale, your social skills just plummet. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's like one syllable, two yeah. syllables. You're you're nervous. You you. It's like pulling teeth trying to get these guys to talk. And and it's like, well, Bill looks like a nerd. Let's <laughs> give him his freaking jacket and his bow tie, and let's have him talk about stuff like I don't know the Mars rover or quantum physics or um climate change i mean i've seen them on, on stuff it's like i and i just blows my mind it's like what are you doing but i know now it's because it's like the, the if you have a, if a large section of your audience because remember bill nye the science guy guy was um syndicated by disney and so there's a lot of kids that grew up with that and so they just think oh well he's got to be a scientist he wears the jacket i mean that was the inspiration behind the clue i did called the code of credibility which was bill nye and his freaking coat He's thin, he's angular, he talks like a scientist, and people yeah. don't, I mean, I'm in the Seattle area. He he wasn't even an actor from Los Angeles. He was an actor from Seattle, a small sketch troupe. Yeah, out of Mark, I remember that skit he did with, as uh, Speed Walker. Speed and, Walker. Yeah, and then he would, he'd enter the, uh, the kingdom, which is biblical, the kingdom, the kingdom, mm. and which they imploded, of course, but he walks in there with the, was it the dynamite they put in there? So... Yeah, yeah, just uh, but what you're getting at is I'm getting a little bit off topic. But what you're getting at is, you know, you present yourself a certain way and you have a certain yeah. look, and it's not uh, what you're saying. Almost, it's pretty much the whole package, the package deal, how articulate you are, and like you said, some some of these scientists, um, they're not very articulate, they're shy, introverts, and they can't, they don't have any personality, they're boring, and people are just going to switch off. So they need someone right. with a character. You're absolutely right. And I've had producers, I've listened to them in the background on, on earpieces. They'll let me run. The producers love someone who doesn't have a lot of awkward pauses. There's someone who can just go, 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 yeah. go. And there's a lot of factoids in my head. I mean, there's they've been it's just getting worse every month. And so it, if I get on a roll, I can I can keep it going. And yeah. the, the the producers are like, should we go to commercial? Nope. Just let them go. Let them go through another segment. Because they they like they like pieces to where a lot of information can, can get packed in in a short amount of time, and I've had to do that in some cases. You know, I go in and it's like you know talking to a radio station. I go, how long they got? I got you, you got eight minutes. It's like, Whew, okay, <laughs> and then and they wait for you. They go, give your your best points. Go, and it's like, da, 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 da. And, yeah. and that's what they want. And so you kind of have to adjust for all audiences. And if you can do that they're going to ask you for, for more things. And so, yeah. no, I don't mind. I mean, turns out I can do a decent interview. Yeah. And go, you're go never ahead. lost for words. You can just, you know, <laughs> like now here's a prime example. You just, you can go, you know, and my sorry <laughs> people like myself, I, I do nine hour podcasts straight. <laughs> Kid you not. Kid you not. So, um, you know, maybe, uh, you know, what I touch upon and I don't have my, like, for example, my phone number, my address underneath my videos like you do. But again, it's it's all about timing. Life's all about timing, and right. the combination of so many factors, like you said, of uh, being well spoken, having having a personality. You put it all together, the right time, the right place, and again, the snowball effect. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, so many things. And, you, you know. and like I've been watching uh, David Weiss, you know, from DITRH. He's yeah. been doing a lot of interviews recently, and that's because again, the snowball. Yeah, exactly. You know, what, I was going to mention that with David Weiss. You know, he went from you know doing a podcast here and there talking about. Like Sandy Hook, uh, the bo uh, Boston bombing and 9-11. Then he, you know, when Flat Earth happened, he jumped aboard that. And then he became uh, very well known. And now, for example, CNN interviewed him. You know, it's just yeah. a spiral effect, or I should say spiral, but it's it's the uh, domino effect and the uh, yeah. snowball effect. And and it really helps. And, uh, you know, you have 
you only have that, like the old saying goes, you know, you only have one time to make that first impression and you start off good and then you're going to get that, you know, again, the snowball and, uh, and that's yeah. what's happening. And, and I think, again, it's so important. But I'll be honest with you, Mark, in the beginning, like I told you earlier, like I said earlier, you know, about this whole thing about uh, appearing on the media, the media is controlled and this and that. Screw that. Get If we can get on there, get on there. That's why when David Weiss showed up on uh, InfoWars, we yeah. felt totally against it. But now it's like, what? You want to just preach to the choir? We're not going to get anywhere. We'll be spinning wheels. So definitely, the more you get on the mainstream media, and that's what I want to get to. I want to get into your appearances with the Flat Earth Conference, but I definitely want to talk about um, the video you sent me last night through Skype, the Jimmy Kimmel incident. Oh, Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah. So what what I honestly didn't think that that was going to run and I don't think they were going to run it either, but there was a lot of things recently that were jogging their memory including the, the most um uh recent Go Golden Globe awards. So Jimmy Kimmel asked to be there. He he asked, "Could I send a team down there?" And it's like, oh, "Okay, you know, I'm sorry. The, the the conference guys were were saying, "Okay, you know, that's fine." Um but what we didn't know, so he sent a four-man team you know, a uh, camera guy, a sound guy, a producer, and I can't remember what the other person did. The camera guy, sound guy, producer, and some other. Anyway, they had to send a four-man team. But there was a fifth guy. And the fifth guy, they snuck in under general admission. So the, the four guys came under media, right? You know, they had to register as media. But the fifth guy, they had dress up in the parking lot. And he came in as general admission with a fake leg cast. Yeah. <laughs> and, and... He came in early on that first day and he sat during my session and he made sure he was the first person to ask a question. Heck, he even got a door prize because he asked wow. him the first question. <laughs> I know, go figure. Yeah, and I hilarious. thought he was, I, I gave him benefit of the doubt and I thought he was absolutely real because come on, let's face it. When it comes to the conspiracy crowd, there's, you know, he wasn't the weirdest I've ever seen. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. the stereotype, but how, you know, Greasy hair, don't comb the hair, don't take a shower, maybe show up with Yeah, know, I mean he was wearing all, all you know, but he was wearing a lot of memorabilia. The cast, <laughs> the cast was a little much. And so, yeah. but but he started butting into there's quite a bit of media there from from different venues, and he started butting into other people's segments. Yeah. And I didn't and, and he caught me afterwards. And what what people don't understand was when I was talking to the to the camera, when I was talking to the media, that was Jimmy Kimmel's guys that I was talking to. And he kept trying to butt in. And so I was going, no, 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 get out of here, right? I was trying to be as nice as I could. Look, I was in a great mood. My set was over. I was done. I didn't have to do anything to the award show. And I, I should have guessed. It was like, because normally you have a producer there that's shooing people away, getting people out of frame. Yeah. And they weren't doing that to this guy. And it didn't, it didn't <laughs> quite register. And so anyway, so our staff figured it out pretty quickly, right? Right during that time, you know, that, that I was that, that part, they figured it out. So he didn't even get to, to see anybody else see the recording, anybody else on stage, except for me. And that's when um, Rick and John and, and those guys, they got him out of there. And because Jimmy Kimmel's team snuck him in, they kicked out the whole team. They kicked out uh, the, the whole group, the, the whole, the, the five, the official five man team. And, then a few phone calls were made and, you know, some angry words were exchanged and we didn't think anything was going to run. And November ended and December came came and left. And then here we are, you know, 2020. And they just happened to throw that in there a couple nights ago. And I just found out just just after a Strange World show. So I think Karen, Karen B sent me a thing. She goes, she goes, oh, God, that we're on Jimmy Kimmel. It's like, oh, no. And so I was a little nervous because I knew that I was the only guy that was up on stage that they had time to record. I was going, oh God, I'm going to be in this. So, but it was fine. Again, it, he covered it and it's not the first time Jimmy has mentioned this, but it was a long skit. It ran, in fact, this segment ran, wow, nine almost minutes? nine minutes. Yeah, nine minutes. Yeah, That's a yeah. long skit to put in your opening monologue. I mean, they went to commercial after this. I mean, it was, it was a long monologue. And it was an interesting take. So, so to to clarify, because they didn't they didn't they, if it was me if I was doing that segment, I would have showed him kind of dressing up and putting on the fake cast because they just had him go in. And there were some people that says, "Was he real? Was he not?" No, and he was absolutely fake. He yeah. was he was not part of us in any way, shape, or form. He's just an an actor, an infiltrator that works for Jimmy Kimmel. And he was hoping to stir things up and you know try to be as ridiculous as possible in a mocking way. But you know what? As far as the segment goes, I've seen worse. 
uh, he, you know, they, they let me talk. They could have chewed me up in editing and they didn't. Yeah. Uh, and they used a lot of the stuff I was talking about. I mean, they didn't go into my speech, which was weird. They, they showed my opening line and my closing line, but for the most part, it was, uh, it, it ended pretty, pretty good. And, you know, if it makes people curious and I think I, by the way, I think Jimmy's curious about the whole thing. I really, really do. Because well, why, why run it? Why run it after all this time? And why make it nine minutes long? Why not just take some shots and, and be done with it? So. Well, you know, I find it interesting, you know, over the, over the years, you know, I've covered uh, so much flat earth, you know, t uh, the topic of flat earth over the years. And what I find interesting is um, you had Dave Chappelle make an appearance talking about flat earth on Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, you had um, uh, Jim Carrey go on talking about the Illuminati, Illuminati, so Sha Shaquille O'Neal, he brought Shaquille O'Neal and yeah. asked him about Flat Earth on Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah, and also too, what I find interesting, very interesting, is uh, the studio where Jimmy Kimmel operates out of is a, a former Masonic lodge or hmm. temple. And if you look above it, the entrance, uh, and I showed that in a video presentation, you can see <laughs> you can see it in in print, you know, in, in it. So it's not like a so, like a banner that's hanging there. This is actually there's evidence it was an old Masonic temple or lodge. Um, and that's the funny thing is, um, one thing I found interesting too, the guy that infiltrated basically the, the flat earth conference and, uh, made a, a complete, you know, yeah. the guy's a complete screwball. But, um, the funny thing is besides everybody else that, you know, he butted in, he kind of like, um, all the other people just kind of like, let him kind of like, you know, impose himself Yeah. Uh, besides you. And I, I love the way you kind of, I'll probably would have decked the guy myself. <laughs> But, but well, no, um, because I thought he was one of ours. Yeah, I mean, and yeah. I treat I treat all our members as kind as I can because look, there's some that are more eccentric than others. Yeah, but yeah, he was the most outlandish. Everybody else kept their composure on camera. You, you know what I find interesting though, Mark, is the guy's name. I, I believe it. What is it? Is it Jake? Jake it's Jake Bird. Yeah, which it's, is it's like I'm a bird. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, isn't that isn't that interesting? Because uh, you know, Admiral Bird. It's like if they'd done any research, they he, they could have done half the routine where they made a connection to him. Yeah. He could have claimed to be like the great great grandson of of Admiral Byrd, and who knows, people might have even bought it. Don't yeah. know. I mean, I don't know if it's his real name, but I, I think it is though, because yeah. Bird's a, Bird's yeah. an unusual last name. I had a, a relative that was a uh, a bird. Yeah. So the, yeah, and like a lady uh, was that Lady Bird. So that bird thing is, you know, uh, Larry Bird in, in the number 33. Right. Celtics as well. But yeah, it, it was kind of, you know, I, at first I was really ticked off with the way it all ended up. It ended up, you know, it's like you said, it's a good thing. It's getting it out there. And and the I hate to say it, um, with all the flat earth, um, you know, flat earth being mentioned in the mainstream media, we don't want that to die down. No. We wanted to get, the, get, get it out there as no. much as possible. And that's one thing, like you said earlier, Mark, it's, it's, it's not slowing down. It's picking up steam. And that yeah. thing is, I said this before, make this analogy. It's like it's like this, Mark. It's like you're going to the gym. And if you go there every day and you're not getting a result, you're going to say, screw this. I give up. I'm going to go back to eating donuts and burgers and fries. When you get results, you want to keep at it. It motivates right. you to keep doing it and pushing further. And that's exactly what I see you doing, David Weiss as well, and many others. So it's fantastic after all this time. It's going strong. It's getting bigger. It's getting larger. And, we, and I, you know, it's, it's I mean, we, what we want to see. We made this cover when I was down in Florida over Christmas break. We made the cover of Skeptic Magazine. And remember, this is Skeptic Magazine. They hate everything. They're like Mikey, you know, in that serial commercial. Mikey and Mikey, yeah. <laughs> and he, he, they, he wrote a 13-page article on it. And it took me it was like an hour to narrate it and put it up on the thing. And he wrote back and he, he was very curious about, you know, what we were doing. But yeah, he, his job, Skeptic Magazine debunks everything. And in this case, they said, well, they debunked themselves because the only thing they watched was the documentary. And I sent him a lot of stuff, but we went back and forth on, on different things. And it turns out his special uh, specialty is cryptozoology, you know, which is, you know, Loch Ness and Bigfoot and stuff like yeah. that. You know, tried to debunk it. And wow. we went back and forth on that for a little while offline. But the fact that we made the cover of a, of, of a, of a magazine that debunks things. Uh, I says says something. I mean, you know, we we're not we're not going away a anytime soon. I can tell you that right now. Yeah, and that and that's the uh, important thing you talked about. This uh, this individual, you know, covers Bigfoot and Loch Ness and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, what I find interesting is what I was talking about is is you know the big um, Hollywood and music industry presence when it comes to flat earth. 
Like I, I remember years ago when I played that song by Toto, 21st Century Blues, and yeah. I had my own uh, clips playing through the song, How Can We Believe the Earth Is Round? I just can't believe it. I just can't conceive it. I remember you um, you actually uh, posted a message or uh, in, underneath the video, and you said, um, I'm going to have this on my playlist. And uh, so what I'm getting at is there's so many – uh, um, songs, you know, I always talk about duality, Freemasonry, yeah. really give us uh, truth in movies, music, comedy, uh, TV shows, and lie to us in the news, the school textbook, uh, textbooks, but also like um, people don't realize it's like, the, like that song by Thomas Dolby, um, Blinded, Blinded by science. science. Yeah, but there's also a song by Foreigner, Blinded by Science. In, mm -hmm. in the Illuminati card game, there's the card Blinded by Science. So they know, you know, the people that run this world, they know they have, uh, like Hitler said, get them while they're young type of thing, programming. Yeah. And um, I look at it this way, you know, I just see this simply as, you know, a five-year-old child who can barely tie their own shoes at that age. They don't have the, the tools to, to look at things, analyze things uh, critically and uh, make a decision. They're just being obviously spoon-fed information. It's, it's like a CD. It's being pressed, a CD-ROM that's being pressed that can't right. be unpressed. And, and that's what happens. And they grow up from five years old. And from that from that uh, very young age, they grow up not questioning at five. They grow up um, at 20, 30, not questioning ever again. Never never uh, looking at it again, analyzing it again. And if you dare do that to them, they get all bent out of shape. And that's what I'm going to ask you, Mark. Yeah. You've been doing so, you did so many interviews. You talked to so many people about a flutter. Has there ever come a, a point where it's gotten like so very heated it almost got physical or really awkward. Just want to ask you about that. One, one, uh, yeah, good question. And only once did I ever start to lose my temper. And it was a radio show where it was three guys against me. Usually when you have, you know, those radio booths where you have three people in the room, they're all, they, and they do that to make sure there's absolutely no dead air, you know, to where there's banter between them. Yeah. And this one guy was just coming at me saying you know it's it's stupid it's ridiculous and it, it at some point i you know it, he he didn't even know have the the basic knowledge of our concepts and i go have you looked into this at all and he's he's like no i don't have to it's stupid i don't have to do any research wow. on this and that's when i started I, I i really got snippy and in fact it's the interview still out there i can't remember which one it is where i said okay so i had you know I had the decency to do research on science stuff and, and you didn't have the re decency to, to research this at all. And he was getting, he was getting really short with me. I said, fine. I go, give me a reason why I shouldn't end this interview right now. I go, you got 10 seconds. <laughs> and the, uh, the producer, you could hear him in the background back and back in this guy off because they don't want to end the interview. You know, yeah. they want to keep going, but it was, but again, I understood. And, and I, since then I've been a lot more um, sympathetic or empathetic, which is, uh, you know, I, I I keep forgetting I have to put myself in their shoes, and which is it's something that Rob Skiba said, and and he and I go back and forth on this, which is I can't get mad at them because I used to be them, but yeah. it's, I know how powerful denial is. You know, it it shakes people to the core to where you go through the five stages of acceptance with flat Earth without a question. You go, you know, it's denial, then anger, um, bargaining, depression, and then finally acceptance. And denial is a powerful thing. And it's, and it's so close to anger that, you know, when people get into it, and we see this with trolls, there are trolls that, you know, that, that do stuff on YouTube that they can't get out of denial. They're just going to keep hammering us as long. And that's like, fine. You want to keep making more videos? I'd like a thousand more like you because you're just helping our metrics. But yeah. You know, you know, Mark, I look at it this way. The, the more people oppose uh, the flat earth, they're mm -hmm. more they're um, like solidly against it and they're putting themselves out there it's going to, their ego, it, you know, they can't, you know, go to the other side type of thing. You know, it's like, yeah, it's like when people are heavily invested into it, into this lie of, of the spinning a, a water rocket ball zipping through space. Yeah. And they're, uh, again, just defending it until to no end and going to every single flat earth uh, channel and just harass them. They're not, they're, they're the, the last ones. Here's the thing is what it, what it comes down to subconsciously getting back to your interview with this individual and they're getting a, um, a bit snippy with you and all, and yeah. giving you a major attitude. It's it's like this. It's like this a, a, an attack on the subconscious. Like how dare you insinuate that I'm deceived? That they lied to me and I bought it. Yeah, uh, when it comes well, to all Earth. You know the I I know that Mark Twain didn't coin it, but he was the one that came up with it. Which is it's easier to fool someone 
than to convince them they've been fooled. Yes. And it's true. so very, very true. No one likes to be tricked. No yeah. one likes to admit that they, they were tricked. And there was a guy, I remember, heck, it was back in 2016, as a matter of fact, early 2016, I think it was Ground Zero Radio, where the guy calls in and he's, you know, his father worked at, worked at NASA and turned a wrench or something. And he he came at me and he and he sees he goes, How dare you? How dare you tell me the world isn't what I think it is? And it kind of it, it it struck a chord with me because I realized what we were dealing with here it was very, very matrix-ish, which is there are some conspiracies, there's a lot of conspiracies you can walk away from. You know, you can, you know, that can be buried in the desert and you know, you don't have to even think about them. But the flat earth is something you can't walk away from because it's it's your world. And you either have to resolve, you have to resolve it one way or the other. And for a lot of people, yeah, you're really, really shaking them up. I mean, it's like, you know, all of a sudden they start looking around and, and it, it scares them and people get angry at, at things that they fear. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the whole thing is, um, because I think subconsciously, of course, if, if they, um, if they, if they, if they're told, look, you know, you've been lied to about this, that we live in this, uh, again, a rocket water ball. And they're, right. uh, they got, now they got to start over with everything. This is the foundation of, of everything in their life. Now I got to question everything. I don't want to do that. I, I work nine to five. My, you know, I have my mortgage. I have my bills, wife and kids. Now you're just making my life more complicated. Don't do that to me. That's what it comes down to with a lot of people. But, you know, the whole thing is that's exactly it. You know, it's it, it's the controllers of this world, you know, keeping oh, yeah. people. Go ahead. But yeah, my, my sister was repeated that what you just said almost verbatim. Which was, she, you know, was like, look, I have a lot of things to deal with already. <laughs> I don't, I don't need this. And it's like, well, you're going to have to get used to it because your, your friends are going to be calling you. It's, hey, did you see what your brother was just doing? So, yeah. yeah. Well, the thing is this, you know, I look at it this way, Mark, too, with a lot of topics um, throughout history. For example, um, at one point, gorillas were like just a, a, a theory, conspiracy theory. Did they really exist? And when you first want to point it out, you're going to be considered crazy. So oh, yeah. and then after a while, like, oh, it's just a known fact. And I believe that's that's what's going to happen with this with this truth. Uh, and it, it can't be kept. It can't be stopped. Uh, absolutely right. As a matter of fact, the, the cryptozoology guy, uh, I, you know, I even stumped him for a second there because, you know, I was talking about this and that. And I brought up the, the coelacanth fish, which is uh, yes. you know, one of those prehistoric fish that was supposedly dead 70, extinct 70 million years. And then they caught one off of um, South Africa, and then one off of Mozambique. India as well. The what? They they caught it. They this is the thing is I know the story about this, Mark. What happened was this. Um, you know these these scientists were, were heard a rumor because basically before South Africa, they, they actually found them um, in the Indian Ocean. Sure. Uh, and Americans and and uh, also scientists from the UK, they went to uh, to India because they heard a rumor about the Sela camp being rediscovered. So yeah. they went out there. They were fishing daily. Every day for like weeks, they didn't find anything. Then through a translator, Indian fisherman says, no, you're doing it wrong. They only pop up at night. Sure. Then they capture their first one. And basically, I know what you're going to get. I don't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead about. Oh, no, no. You, you're absolutely right, though. I mean, the, my, my point was, and I built it into my speech in, for 2019, which was, it's like, look, if you would have asked every single scientist in the world that was tied to that fish in one way or another, you know, related sciences, they would have bet everything they had that it has been extinct for 70 million years. And every single one of them was wrong. I mean, it was it. And so when, when people say, well, you're saying that all this, everybody in science is wrong, I'm going, yeah, they've been wrong before. Yes. And and so, in fact, it was interesting because the guy from Skeptic Magazine, he specialized, one of his big articles was debunking Loch Ness. And I don't, I'm not going to get into it with him because like, okay, I mean, you know, he does skeptics, you debunk stuff for a living, but it's like, okay. But when I say the, but he's admitted, he goes, oh yeah, the seal can't, that's a weird one. Don't really know what to think about that. It's like, are you kidding? I go, yeah. that's the main argument for Loch Ness. You say, why aren't there plesiosaurs swimming around Loch Ness? Well, because they've been dead for a hundred million years. Oh, uh, that fish over there, that, that fish, it's not dead. <laughs> so yeah. tell me again, why you don't think there's plesiosaurs? I mean, my, my point was this, if you would have weighed, if that fish was a, even a little more elusive, they'd be joking about it today. There, you know, be, there'd be guys, you know, the, the fishermen's like, oh yeah, I caught one of those. And scientists go, you're drunk or crazy or both. Cause that fish has been dead for a long time. Science, it's science is only right until the day they're not. And then all of a sudden, and what the follow-up thing to the seal camp, I don't want to dwell too much on this. Yeah. The follow-up was, is that science immediately put it under their umbrella. 
you know, it just came up with made, made up reasons why it was still around. It's like, well, it's a it's a living fossil, and <laughs> it's uh, it's in an evolutionary state of stasis, which means it's not evolving right now, but it might in the future. It's like, yeah, what, what's it been doing for seventy million years? Not to mention, it's like, how is the sea not absolutely swarming with these things? If yeah. they've been hanging around for 70 million years. I believe it's 700 million, but I could be off on that. No, 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 it's 70. It's 70. 70? But, okay. but, hey, what's what's 100 million years yeah. between friends? Yeah. Well, we know this is the thing, get, getting what you're saying, Mark, is this this uh, coelacanth fish hasn't evolved in whatever time frame. And, and what it comes down to, everything, uh, what it comes down to is Masonic duality. Sure. When they say we're heliocentric, we're actually geocentric. When they say the sun is far and large, uh, far and, uh, and and very large, you know, it's actually close and small. You know, uh, when they say there's no crater, there's a crater. So whatever they're pushing, you know, is basically the opposite. It's right. very simple to me uh, to break it down because I, I said it a million times on my channel, the human mind can't go from A to Z. You can debate, for example, the distance of the sun if science says 93 million miles away. Another scientist might come along and say, oh, no, it's 83 or, or 75. But when you come down to 3,000 or 4,000, then you just you, you can't go there because it's too far off. So that's again why they teach off duality. The human right. mind can't go from A to Z. Yeah, yeah. Again, uh, let, let, let me end the the crypto thing on this. It's like everything we've had myths for years and years and years. The giant panda was a myth. The giant anaconda was a myth. Uh, the giant squid, and he was even arguing that with me. I'm going, look, we've never found. Oh no, we found them. Oh, not the big ones. You haven't. Not the ones that eat sharks. Not those things. Because they're they're too deep and they're too fast. But until science, until they see something, they think it's a myth, yeah. and then they put their stamp on it. And then it's like, well, it's just part of science at this point. It's like, yeah, okay. that's exactly. It. I know what you're getting. You're basically getting at is what we say until proven wrong by us, not by you, by us. And yeah. that you're going to stick by their own narrative, and you can't question it. Well, the thing is this, you know, if anybody outside questions, well, that's not the scientific method. Um, this is this is this is uh, the truth until. Uh, science as the ones that are dictating it come up with another answer of course yeah ne um, neil tyson's quote again one of the most arrogant things i've ever heard since kanye you know set, speaks because everything he says is ridiculous yeah I but agree. neil tyson when he said that that science is true whether or not you believe in it it's like yeah wow <laughs> yeah, like, that's, the like, that's the religion that's the religion you know yeah it is that is a religion at that point, that's when it that's when it jumps the rails and it goes from science to scientism. So when I and I've been, been very clear with people, it's like, oh, I don't hate science. I love science. I'm talking to you on science right now. But when science makes massive leaps of faith that are unwarranted and irresponsible, then it becomes scientism. Yeah. And it's like, look, we got to rope that stuff in. You've been you've been beating people over the, uh, the head with textbooks for a long time now. And uh, luckily for us, the uh, the Internet highway runs both ways yeah and you know mark you mentioned something off air about you know or you actually mentioned on air as well when you know you talk to people you know people have um you know basically thrown things information at you the snowball effect of you know you're out there and people are contacting you just like in 2015 when i was talking about satellites being a hoax yeah a video presentation on that saying show me some real uh photos of satellites in space um, and, and what it comes down to is after that video was done, uh, approximately a week after I had that video uploaded, I was contacted by um, someone in Canada who worked for Rogers Telecommunication, uh, Telecommunications. He told me, he goes, look, you're absolutely right. He goes, I work for, I work for Rogers and uh, we own, I think he said four or five sports franchises, each one, of course, worth an excess of $100 million each. He goes, look, we have all these sports franchises but we don't have a single satellite in space. And guess what I did for Rogers? I laid under ocean fiber optic cable. Sure. Works off that in high base uh, ground tower. So again, dealing in this realm, you, you get information, you're, you're spoon fed information. A guy that um, does, uh, he works for a cruise ship. He goes, I try to make cell phone calls, you know, out, out in the ocean. He goes, when I, you know, I can't contact my wife. When I get close to shore, boom, it works. It's all about, about towers, you know? And yeah. The, the movies have changed, have, have really augmented our reality with what is, what is science true and what's not. Um, sat phones, for example, always work in the freaking movies. And sat phones in real life, not so reliable. Yeah. Uh, I mean, little, little things like, I'll, I'll give you two quick ones. Um, movie blood. Uh, mo movie blood is always red. Always, always, always. Why? 
<laughs> because when blood dries, it dries black. And most people don't know what a little, quite a bit of blood looks like when it dries black. And they've tried that on movies back in the day. And they're like, why, what's that black stuff doing on a shirt? Well, that's what blood looks like when it dries. It's like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not feeling it. So they made sure that movie blood was always red. But the thing that got me the most, the thing that drove me insane was the airlock stuff, which was when, when you see a hole in a pressurized system, some sort of space vehicle, you know, a hole shows up. It's like, oh my God, we only got two minutes of air left. Get the duct tape, you know, yeah. and they're running around. It's like, you don't. And, and I granted, I had to learn this myself, which was kind of like, do you remember? Oh, this would be a perfect example. You remember the end of um, Aliens? The, the, the second one where Sigourney, you know, she's blowing the thing out of the airlock and she's climbing up the ladder and all this wind and stuff is going past her. Yes. You remember that? That's yeah. not how it would work. Yeah. <laughs> it would be instant. People don't get it, which is why I put it in the beginning of my Strange World things. It's like, you can look at us up on YouTube. Type in, it's not even a flat earth video. Type in vacuum versus steel rail car. It's instant. It's absolutely fraction yeah, of a videos. second instant you lose all the air you lose all uh, the, every bit of atmosphere you everything out of your lungs you are dead you're dead instantly Crush. a fraction of a second but that's not good hollywood so they can't yeah. show that you know you know it's funny marcus uh, talking about hollywood mm -hmm. you know i find it interesting how they love to mock you know the the masses and i, I mentioned this before where you have like for example you know star wars the biggest sci-fi franchise out there you know multi-billion dollar um, um franchise yeah. And you have, like, for example, George Lucas, his logo is the flat earth dome with the sun and the moon underneath it before every single Star Wars movie starts. There's your, there's your flat earth model before you look at, you know, aliens from other worlds, distant, uh, distant planets and zooming through space. It's like, it's like, it's like so many movies will give you like little hints of truth, like right. not even revolving around flat earth. Like, for example, you watch Back to the Future. We know about the flat earth clock. Yeah. Uh, back to the future in the, in the opening scene but people miss this there's actually we know later in the movie you know in the movie of course doc is hanging by the clock tower you know um yeah you know but here's the thing is people have to look at the clocks he's actually hanging there's a little model of doc hanging from a clock tower in the beginning of back to the future they're telling you what's going to happen before it happens at the beginning yeah. just like total recall where you know uh arnold schwarzenegger the character is in the um uh, he's in that one lab, and they're gonna basically they're basically telling you what's going to happen. Uh, is what's going to play through the whole movie in the right. beginning of the movie, you know. So they like to like it's almost like we're playing with you. Like we're going to tell you the whole story before it even happens. So these yeah. people, and I said this a million times, with people trying to enter Hollywood um, or the music industry, you're not going to just walk into Hollywood being a, 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 a say a director, writer, producer out of the street and say, "Oh, I got a great movie." It's not about that. It's about programming first, right. about conditioning the masses. And all that entertainment is just disguised as entertainment when it's really programming first. But by, by the way, you know, as you know, I watch a ton of movies and a lot of media, uh, you know, television shows, just about you name it. I, I've watched it and I've been reviewing a lot of movies lately. I've been wa watching with a friend recently, just catching, catching her up on a whole bunch of films. And I am so hyper aware of globes now, so hyper aware that I can spot, a, I, I spot them in, in, with, you know, just a blink of an eye. It's like globe, globe. And it's amazing yeah. how many globes are inserted into different movies for no apparent reason whatsoever. They are always in frame. And you know, I'm going to tell you something because I've covered this as well. And I'm glad you brought up this point. Hmm. Indiana Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, I seen that movie way back when at a drive-in. Was back in '81. Yeah. And um, you know, being being a big fan of the movie, you know, I watched it so many times. One thing I always notice when Indiana Jones is in the classroom. Um, as a professor, you, you look at the globe from different angles. You see it moving around the table. It's positioned based on camera angle. It's there every time. Like there's like like there's a shot of, of him looking at like um, I forgot the character's name. The older man that comes in the classroom. He picks oh, yeah, yeah. off the table. When they show him walk in, they sh it's like there's Indy's face and there's a globe like right there next yeah. to his head. So they're always positioning, and I see what they're doing. And so, again, it's all about conditioning programming. You hit the nail on the head when it comes to globes everywhere in movies. Just, yeah. you know. And I, 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 it, it may sound like a silly, a silly conspiracy, but, I mean, come on, I wake up with Flat Earth. But <laughs> it would not take much to do silent producers. A lot of people don't know this about the production community in Hollywood, which is, you know, producers, when you see producer credits on a screen, that's just somebody that gave money 
to the the studio to the to that production and when you give money they'll usually come back and say okay what do you want you know you gave us 20 20 000 you gave us 50 000 you gave us 100 000 what do you want for that and the, it it would take nothing it's like i want to help set up you know some background little doohickey set design for this scene or this scene and most people the the globe is so benign it's so trivial for most directors like whatever it's just a globe who cares they wouldn't even think twice about it and so and but it's been i mean you wait i mean you go flip channels and start watching movies watch for a little while you'll spot it in just about every movie and sometimes it makes sense and other times it doesn't make sense you know i mean yeah fine you want to show it in every freaking classroom ever that's fine but to show it in like a doctor's office or a lawyer's office or i don't know the ones that were throwing me like cop shows the, like on top of filing cabinets in cop shows it's like there's no reason for a freaking globe to be up there yeah you know they, there's yeah. They, they're cop shows you know, I, it, it just amazes to me I, and but yeah i'm hyper aware of it now it's like oh, okay this is the subtle reinforcement that's been going on basically for the last 50 years and it's very very effective i mean why not why not just you know they they realize it's like well after they get out of high school there's no more globes you know, yeah. even in, in universities, not that many. But if we keep put them in media and Americans, while well, the world is so big on digesting media. Well, even, yeah, even when it comes to like seeing a soap opera as the world turns and they show the actual, you know, uh, yeah. the spinning in the very beginning. Here's the funny thing is, you know, again, um, I talked about George Lucas and the flat earth model before Star Wars starts. Well, look at Back to the Future. It's Universal uh, Studios and they got the globe showing in the very beginning. Right. The globe, the opening scene with the flat earth. So, it's definitely a combination of they're putting the globe in there, but secretly hiding flat earth uh, in, in so many instances. It, it's it's ridiculous. Here's something interesting, Mark. Um, if you ever watched that movie, uh, that movie Porky's. Of course. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm an 80s kid. Of course <laughs> I knew Porky's. Kim, yeah. Kim, Kim Cattrall at her best. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely. And also the, uh, what I'm getting is the opening scene. With the the individual on the bed, you know, we want to talk about get too graphic about what happens when he's on the bed. But the funny thing is, is there's a, there's a man speaking like he has a radio playing in the background, and he's talking about this and that. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he goes about he talks about the stars locked in the firmament. Really? So, yeah. Watch it again. Interesting. And, or, yeah, just watch it again. You talked about the stars locked in the firmament. So there's definitely the, these clues. Uh, um, everywhere when, when it yeah. comes down to it. Also, I mentioned this to you um, off air, Mark, about the uh, this one um, a movie producer. Uh, his name is Joe France. He was involved in the, with the Jackass crew. He's been in, uh, involved with Discovery Channel, sure. uh, um, you know, Sony. He's involved with so many projects with the mainstream commercials uh, all over the place. I have an interview with him actually on my channel, and basically, what it what it uh, how this all uh, came about was. Um, he made this movie, um, produced it, directed it, and he's actually an actor in the movie. There's a scene where he's a teacher in the classroom, and he's yelling at a, a, at a student um, how, how stupid he is and how uneducated he is. And behind him, on the chalkboard, is a, the Flat Earth map, and it says Science 101 right behind him. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, and I, you know, he told me in the podcast, which, you know, this is his story. I'm not saying I'm buying it, but I'm buying it. But he said, Oh, yes. He says during the filming, um, someone, you know, asked him what he's doing. He said, I'm making a movie it was at a school. Um, and then he goes, well, how about if I um, uh, pitch in some money? And all oh, right. I know this story. I know this story. This was this was done um, early last year or wasn't it? Or, or maybe yeah, the year before. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, this that that is the, the perfect example of producers, hidden producers getting yeah. involved. Yeah. That's another case you just mentioned. That's why I brought it up because you talk about producers wanting to add in their own type of, uh, you know, Easter eggs, whatever they want to add into a movie because yeah. they're financing it. Yeah. Now, yeah, most your big directors, they control everything. But the smaller directors are the ones that just want to get the damn film made. They don't care. They just they <laughs> want the freaking check. And it's like, yeah. it's like, fine. You want to add a bookcase here and a globe there? I don't care. Just give me your, your money. Yeah. And that's exactly right. And so I think it wouldn't take much. Any project that's going to be a mainstream, because there's not that many mainstream movies that are made every year that, that get released, you know, all you have to do is get a hold of them and say, yeah, can we, you know, spend a little money? People say, you know, how can you keep this a, a secret? It's like, all you need is time and money. That's all you need to do. I mean, yeah, quite a bit of money, but remember, we've been doing it over the last 50, 60 years. 
and that that's you know deferred payments that works out quite well yeah it's, it's definitely an interesting world we, we we live in where for example here's here's a good analogy you might work for a company uh, getting back to nasa for example this is an analogy with nasa not sure. knowing what's going on up at the top you work for a company you can have a, a corrupt uh, manager assistant managers and you're just doing your thing within the company, you have no clue what they're doing because you have your own department doing your own thing. And right. that's what it comes down to even making movies. Uh, for example, you might have someone talking about flat earth in a movie scene. Um, it's not from them. It's from, you know, they're told to say it. So these people are aware and, they're, and the actor is just like, oh, it's, it's just a movie. Does it mean anything? But these people at the top, they definitely know what's going on. Yeah, the movies, it's in fact, the movies are you know, sometimes more compartmentalized than the military. There's so many specialized yeah. things that, yeah, you could slip th something into just about anywhere if you wanted. Yeah. And honestly, even at the top, yeah, the, at the top, they know where the money's coming from. But as far as the requests go, unless the request has something to do with the actors themselves, they don't care. You know, yeah. as long as as long as the request has nothing to do with the endorsements of the film, like, oh, you know, if we're using Ford cars, you want to slip a Chevy in there. Or if we're or if we've got McDonald's in the background, you want to put a Burger King wrapper somewhere. You know, as long as it doesn't matter with the endorsements, they don't care. So you know, set design, fine. You want three flowers there instead of two. You want to make one purple. <laughs> yeah. Go nuts. But there's so much symbolism, you know. And again, getting back to that song I was telling, uh, we were talking about earlier, Mark, with uh, Toto, the 21st century blues. How how can we believe the Earth is round? Sure. Um, you, you, I mean, we have to look at it this way. Uh, I, this is my how I see it where these people are just like um, these singers, they have talent, they have good voices, people uh, in the music in music industry hunt them down, basically say, we're gonna hire this person, but we're gonna, you know, we're gonna give them their looks, we're gonna give them lyrics. So what it comes down to, I don't think the band Toto is sitting around a studio and we're gonna just put out a song called, how can we, with the lyrics, how can we believe the earth is round? I just can't believe it, I just, we just, I just can't conceive it. So I believe this coming from, obviously, just like an actor in sure. Hollywood, they're, they're given a script to read, the same thing with these musicians where there's too much involved. There's too much in, uh, too much into programming and also giving us little Easter eggs just to let these um, these hired artists come out and just sing whatever they want. There's more to it with. Uh, oh, yeah. So, so many musical artists don't write their own material. Yeah. So many. Yeah. I mean, every once in a while you'll get, you know, a singer. You know, there's a reason why there's singers and then there's singer songwriters. Yes. Uh, like Ta yeah, like Taylor Swift writes some of her own stuff, but I'm sure she gets recommendations. Elton John, uh, you know, some of, but but when you have a, like a group, it's it gets a lot trickier because you know you have to crank out albums, and you know they get inspired from other people, and like um, you you probably knew it. I don't want to go off too much on this. Like okay. Prince, Prince yeah. wrote songs for a whole bunch of people. He was yeah. like a hell of a songwriter. And people, you pay, you pay for that. You know, you don't necessarily get royalties, but you know, you pay a flat fee and you can get credit for it. Song, you know, was helped written by blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And, and he's definitely, for example, there's, for example, I've seen instances where like say Kenny Rogers, um, he's a songwriter as well, given uh, to another, um, you know, for example, he's a country music singer. He gives songs to say someone in rock and other like he oh yeah himself, he passes it on so this is not for me it's, it's, you know these are my, these are good lyrics but it doesn't fit my criteria as a as a as an artist i'm yeah. gonna pass over somebody else lionel richie i've heard he's done the same as well same. but what, but again getting back to the these singers and, and these lyrics for example and i see david weiss uh deep inside the rabbit hole inside the chat good to see you in here david um when you have and david's the reason i also mentioned david's because i he's covered and i've covered it with the song by Journey, um, you know, with the uh, was it was it going to say David? He knows what I'm talking about the song with. I forgot the, the wheels in the sky. Oh uh, yeah, I just put, had a video. Yeah, the wheel in the sky keeps on turning, yeah. and people are like, "What?" You know, you look online and you see people like debating and, and like arguing what what the actual meaning is. Well, that's obviously the wheel in the sky that keeps on turning is the sun, moon, and stars, and I just find it interesting. Again, did these people did, did Journey write themselves or was it? someone behind the scenes the, the story right. is it was um one of the band members girlfriend or wife that was involved with the music but that can be just put out there when someone you know on the outside in the exterior actually gave them uh the lyrics you're absolutely right when it comes to what resonates with the public the any artist will tell you this that you know unless you're like a pure artist they don't care 
and, you know, where it comes from, if it resonates with the public yeah. that, you know, the, the, it's one of the oldest sayings in showbiz, which is give the people what they want. And yeah. it's like, by God, if, if I wrote some you know stupid lyric that makes no sense to me, but people just keep humming it, I, I'm going with it. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, what's funny is you hear it all the time. You know, I've heard it in the past when I was younger, when uh, artists are asked, what is the deep meaning behind this song? And, and I heard this response, oh, whatever you want it to mean to you. Mm. Because it really doesn't come from them. So maybe they're put on the spot, like to give an answer of what it means when it can mean, again, anything you want it to mean because it's not their creation. I believe everything is, is basically controlled. I'm not saying every song in an album is uh, given to no, them. Not everything. But, but, but yeah, like you said, the, the, the big hits, like also programming too, like for example, the song by Billy Joel, where, um, you know, we didn't start the fire. It was, you know, it was always burning since the world is turning. So there's mm -hmm. a little bit program. There's both. There's, there's the flat earth. There's the, the ball earth. Um, also, Stevie Wonder's Higher Ground. I'm not even saying he wrote it, but the world keeps on turning. That that lyric um, that's in the song, you know, you know. so they're definitely putting the duality aspect of the ball earth. They're pushing that, but also slip in the flat earth. So I find it very interesting. And okay. it gets back to that song by Genesis. The land. This is the land of confusion, where they show all these politicians as puppets in the music video. So you have Ronald Reagan, all these so-called world leaders as puppets. There's too many people. There's too many problems, and not a, uh, not much love to go around. And again, you look through this like this this one. It's not a hallway per se, but there, the camera view is passing through all these world leaders, which are puppets. Yeah, that that puppet. video was way ahead of its time. Yeah, and that, was, that was a it, blast. That was it spawned a television show, which I don't think even got out of its pilot stage because it was hitting too close to home. Yeah, uh, because yeah. the the puppets were excellent. I mean, they were very well done for the eighties, and yeah. and said people are going, oh wow, this is really really. I mean, it's, seriously, it was way ahead of its time, and uh, I was kind of sad they're gone. You know, one thing Mark is, uh, you know, doing a lot of research into this, and I, I'm like, I was very fascinated by this by that video. And I, and I applied that and I had a copyright issue after some certain point. People at the, uh, of course, people behind the scenes, behind Genesis, they saw it after a few months. It actually was taken down. But um, before that happened, um, I was I was contacted by someone in the UK and said, this whole um, scenario with all these world leaders being puppets is based off a TV show in the UK. I forgot the whole entire, um, I forgot the name of the, of the TV show and how it all uh, corresponds exactly. But Basically, the guy summed up, they had a TV show based on these world leaders being nothing more than puppets. And they, in Genesis, was brought, basically, they, they use the same kind of format with using the uh, the world leaders. That must, that must be tied to what I was, what I was talking about, because they tried to, I, I think you're absolutely right, but I think that show tried to, um, I think they tried to bring it over here, you know, like a lot of UK shows. And, yeah, yeah. And, and they uh, just got a lot of, you, as you can imagine, you're talking about powerful people doesn't take much to, to get something like that shut down. But yeah, I, I just look at it this way. They're not just going to, you know, push something uh, randomly. There's always going to be a uh, programming, uh, some type of uh, manipulation with the minds. Um, you know, you look at record albums or, you know, they're 33 uh, and a third uh, RPMs. I mean, I how, know, does right? <laughs> <laughs> how does that happen? You know, um, you know, there's a lot of things and we're getting into other territories, but for example, you know, not just flat earth. For example, you look at a, a band like Depeche Mode and yeah. they were, they had a, um, they had basically, they sung that song. Um, what was the name of the song? Um, they had a lot of, of the world trade towers. What was the song? These, I, I covered so many things. I forgot the name of the song. Um, my little world comes crashing in. Enjoy the silence. Oh yeah. Enjoy the it, silence. It, that's sure. it. Yeah. The, the enjoy, they played um, the enjoy the silence song on top of the trade towers. And here's the thing is, um, this was directed by a French, uh, a French a, a TV crew, and the lyrics of "My world come, my little world come crashing in." Enjoy the silence. Words are meaningless, and the whole thing is that's a Freemasonic uh, concept of you know they learn to communicate without speaking. Right. So these are these you could tell a song like that it it coincides it matches up with the Masonic um, the way they operate. Sure, uh, words are meaningless. So I found that very interesting, but. We can go on and on about, about the music industry. And of course, the launch of MTV with, of course, um, you know, they had the, the, the launch. Well, of the Apollo the, uh, was what they started with. Yeah. And then they, they trans transitioned over the space shuttle. But that was short lived because of the uh, the Challenger disaster in 86. Yeah. They, yeah. Uh, I, remember, they... I remember that. And, uh, 
and also too that you know they still you know give out those uh those astronaut uh um oh yeah the awards yeah yeah the awards the they give out the awards awards are, are all astronauts yeah and, and also in canada they had the uh was the mtv headquarters it was uh on top of a masonic lodge or old masonic lodge and you can actually see um it says masonic lodge and above it's where it says masonic lodge in the building there's the mtv uh, neon lights right above it so there's so many connections when it comes to th they're blending in uh programming again with entertainment yeah. Um, it's just, they, they put it in our faces. And again, what it comes down to is movies, music, you know, again, they're always going to have that programming conditioning. And again, there's so many songs with the, with the ball earth being present. Uh, but, um, what, what was her name? Um, Carlisle was it Melinda Carlisle? Forgot Belinda Carlisle. Belinda Carlisle. Um, heaven's a place on earth with all those globes. Everybody's holding, a an illuminated globe walking around. Yeah. Um, there's that one, I forgot the name of the, um, maybe you can help me here, Mark, being an 80s guy. There's that one, um, there's that one group back in the 80s, and okay. it goes, Pop Goes the World, and he's, this guy standing in this, in this room popping bubbles, and behind him is a curtain, and behind that curtain, you can see the, the ball earth behind him spinning, and then he's like, he looks at it, and he turns around, there's a question mark on the globe. Men with, men without hats. Yes. That's it. And then he starts dancing on the flat earth, a model <laughs> on the ground. So it's like, it's like, they're just putting in, you, you know, these people, you know, uh, uh, behind it all directing it. There's just uh, a lot more to it than just again, entertainment, which I find very fascinating, very interesting uh, the manipulation that's taken place. And of course, like the Thompson twins on their mm -hmm. album, they have not only one ball earth, they have like seven, like, like four or five ball earths. Um, in, in, on their album cover, if you know the uh, the Thompson Twins from back in the uh, sure. back in the eighties, yeah. So I remember the Thompson Twins? Yeah. There's, so there's so much of that. There's so much of that going on. And one thing I'll, before we move on uh, from the, uh, I want to get into other topics. One thing I want to mention too is Meatloaf. You talk about songwriters, and he had, um, you know, of course that one song I, I always played, uh, "Life's a Lemon." I want my money back. Hmm. And the lyrics go, you know, what about your schools are useless? Nothing but a a pack of lies. Then he goes, life's a lemon, um, you know, everything's lying. That's a fact. Life's a lemon. I want my money back. Yeah. And here's the thing is on the, um, on the album cover, it says songs by Jim Steinman. And this J Steinman is in the music, um, you know, music writers hall of fame. Hmm. So this is not even from him. This is not from him. This is stuff again, given to him, telling you the truth of this license. Everything's a lie. That's a fact. So it's, it's just funny. And it's, of course, you know, the songwriter himself in the Hall of Fame. Um, again, you know, this is where people people look at and say, like, they, they listen to someone like George Carlin, the comedian, speaking so much truth about politics, how it's controlled, how we don't have a say. Just be happy with what you get. Right. Oh, people walk away and say, Oh, he's just a comedian. It doesn't really mean anything when again, this is duality where they're gonna, they're gonna nothing's hidden, they're gonna give us the truth, but people can accept it because it comes at the at the at the wrong uh, platform. Um, again, comedy. Uh, uh, you know, music, movies, whatever it, it might be. So, um, yeah, I just find that all interesting. One thing I want, I want to discuss too, Mark, is um, getting back on track when it comes to flat Earth. Yeah, and, and all your work, and um, and when it comes to say uh, conferences mm -hmm. and uh, issues you might have had. Um, you know, uh, we know about Logan Paul, oh, yes. that whole fiasco, and um, this is one thing I, I think that needs to be brought up. Sure. You know, we want to get the truth out there. And I'm not going to go too long, Mark. I want, I want you to talk about this. We yeah. want to get the truth out there, but there's lessons learned to be learned along the way on the proper way to do things. Uh, what do you What do you want to know? Just how it went down? Yeah, basically how it went down and um, just um, the whole the, Logan Paul fiasco. The, the big thing was is that we were told – okay, so – Ra the the promoter of the conference, the Denver conference last year, uh, not not Dallas, but Denver. Um, he made an arrangement with Lo with Logan that Logan was going to come out and he was going to give him VIP treatment. However, Logan decided to put something in there. He says, "Look, don't tell anybody that I'm coming. Keep this an absolute secret." And since Robbie was the only he was the only uh, conduit, he kept it a secret. And he kind of let it, you know, I will say this, he, he did do a, an interesting producer thing, which was he let the rumors build. 
he let the hype machine get up to where we we had no idea who this was. He said, "Oh, it was a it's a VIP." But like he told Jaron and I, it's like he's he's into acting and he's into music. He's a singer and an actor. Well, there's very few singers who are also actors. You know, like guys like Will Smith, for example, or Jack Black, or, or people like that. And so it kept building and building, and we were selling more conference tickets because of this. It's like, oh wow, you know, this, this could be somebody really huge. It's going to be there, and. He, but he, but Logan also said, okay, well, you know, I'll do promos for your your thing before I go, you know, before I before I show up in Denver, and he didn't, and you know, he he was going to show up at the the VIP mixer the the first night, and he didn't show up, and so finally, I think Robbie got frustrated, and he told somebody, and it was like it was Logan Paul. So here's where it gets weird: is that because of Logan's demographic, which is usually eighth grade boys, I mean, young young guys junior high kids basically uh because he does a bunch of pranks nobody really nobody in the flyers community knew who he was except me because i do a lot of internet research anyway and i kind of see what's out there in a lot of different venues i'm kind of curious what you know what's turning things out there and i i, I was just like just in shock i mean i find out and I'm, i have to go on you know well the, the conference is going to start the very next day and I, 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 there's no way it could be this guy. And I, I didn't, I didn't know, know where Robbie was. So I didn't confront him on it, but there, I was like, there's no way it could be Logan because Logan is an internet troll. He's a horrible, horrible person. Mm -hmm. um, if you have any doubt of that, I mean, he's blacklisted by a lot of the media already and, and some have forgotten, but uh, he was the guy that went to the Japanese suicide forest <clears throat> and was making fun of, at some of the dead bodies. Yeah, poor taste. Horrible. It was awful. I mean, I mean, you know, when you fly, I mean, talk about premeditated. You fly out to this, you go out to the forest, you film it, you edit it, and then you release it, and nobody's telling you this is a bad idea. Yeah, good people you got with you there, Logan. So he he so it was him. And and I so basically I made the decision that night. I said, okay, if I get down there to registration and I hear that he's it's actually him, I'm out of here. The night before, I had I had met with some of the speakers over dinner, and I railed for at least an hour, saying, "Look, this guy's horrible, horrible. He should not be here in any way, shape, or form." And I I just couldn't get any traction with them because they were saying, "Well, you know, no offense, we just don't know who you're talking about." It's like, oh my god. So I I left. I got on a plane the very next day and uh, and flew back to Seattle. That that was it, and I said nope, and uh, and which was very risky on my part because nobody else was in my camp, and I didn't want anyone to go with me. You know, I I just said, look, I'm just going to make a statement. He can't punk all of us. He can't punk the entire conference. Yeah. So I was basically the insurance policy. So uh, it was him, and in fact, Robbie even let him on stage, uh, and you know, he could barely. The guy is as dumb as a bag of hammers. I mean, he could barely <laughs> string a sentence together. Seriously. <laughs> He yeah. is about as, about as sharp as a bag of wet hair. <laughs> he, he's he's that bad. I mean, he was yeah. really. I watched the Daily Beast do an interview with him outside of the Denver conference, and he used the word "obviously" in a sentence that only had thirteen words in it, three wow. times, wow. three times in thirteen words, and he was just using it as filler. But you know, the world is uh, is uh, it's obvious that the world is obviously flat. Something something obviously. It's like what? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, he's really, really bad. And so it turns out that his entire intention was to punk the whole place. But in order to do it, he had to make one of his people seem legit. So he picked his best friend, Mike, I think, and said that Mike, oh, yeah, Mike's absolutely a flat earther. And Logan's curious about it. And everyone, the staff, he brought a pretty big crew with him. All the staff was completely in on the joke. It was, and they were completely, you know, they, they were telling everybody. The problem was, is they, like a lot of people, they didn't do any research whatsoever. They had no talking points. They had no, didn't know. I mean, they were just lazy. And so he shot it and then went back. And I think it was three months later, uh, he finally released it this hour long. Oh my God. It was just painful to watch absolutely it was the most juvenile thing i've ever seen in my life and to where you know we were saying you know mike was saying oh yeah he lost his friend off, fell off the edge of the earth like at minute seven he's already doing this it's like oh, okay and so i was completely vindicated uh to the point where even popular science magazine <laughs> said and that journalist was there with me at denver she interviewed me before i left 
And like the last paragraph of the popular science article says, well, it turns out Mark Sargent was right about Logan Paul, blah, blah, blah. So it's like, all right, it was, it was uh -huh. fine. But no, I had no regrets and I absolutely would have done it again, you know, in a heartbeat. I don't blame um, you, Mark. And I, and I said this before, you know, if it, it feels me, I would have went on stage and, and just went off, you know, in your situation. But again, you know, you would think, you know, you've done so much for the community and this screwball shows up and he gets, he gets basically the spotlight. And what did he do to deserve it? You know, it's like, it's like if you're the, um, the star for a, a baseball team and somebody, some rookie out of nowhere, you know, is going to pinch hit for you. That makes absolutely no sense. Well, uh, to, to be fair, uh, I'm not going to, you know, I, and I've said this on different things. Anyone, any person, if if Vsauce would have showed up, they would have given him preferential treatment. If PewDiePie would have showed up, they, they would have given him preferential treatment. As long as they had millions of subs, and that's what Robbie was looking at. He, he saw the guy at the time, I think he had like 5 million, 6 million subs, and that's a lot of subs. Yeah. Now, granted, how many are real? Who knows? But it doesn't really matter because... In the social community world, a social media world, the uh, the the numbers, your numbers are gospel, and and yeah. kids. I mean, I've seen kids go, oh yeah, PewDiePie, he's the number one social. I mean, they consider him bigger than uh, every anchor on CNN combined. And it's like, what are you talking about? PewDiePie buys at least half of his subs, yeah. and they they don't they don't know about it, or they're ignorant, or they just don't care. Um, but anyway, it, it was fine. Look, we, we learned from it. It could have been a lot worse by that. I mean, he, what happened was he got up on stage and he chickened out. I think he wanted to come at us, but when you're sitting on stage in front of hundreds of people and they're all absolute believers and you're not, what are you going to do? I mean, even your, your hardest comedians are not going to go into a room and just go at them unless they have a death wish. Maybe he, yeah, maybe he's afraid he's gonna get slaughtered. <laughs> oh yeah, I think so. I mean, normally, you know, the guy just peels off his clothes and starts running around like an idiot. Yeah, and one uh, thing I want to uh, make perfectly clear, as far as Robbie Davidson, mm -hmm. he, he, Robbie Davidson, and I, we, we, you know, I did a podcast with him as well on his platform, and it's not, it's not about that. It's just learning from mistakes. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, moving Look, forward, there, like I'm, I'm picking on Robbie whatsoever. I just, just want to go over and get your point of view about it he, and, and, and discuss it and that. Friend, he, friend he's not alone. He, there are other people would have done the same thing. Trust me. There are, there are producers yeah. out there that were it's like Logan Paul. Absolutely. We're going to take him. Uh, where he made a mistake was he shouldn't have kept it a, an absolute secret because other people would have said, Oh dude, what are you doing? Um, mm -hmm. And the other thing was, you know, don't give him, you know, he was giving him too much. And mm -hmm. that's where, that's where he, he, he made the mistake. And, and again, we learned from it and it got us a whole bunch of, of press. You know what? Yeah. Logan, Logan paid thousands and thousands of dollars to come out and do this. And it generated some mainstream and it put us into a whole, you know, his demographic is really, really young. And he put things out there and sure, uh, you know, a lot of kids like, oh, Logan says flat earth is stupid. It must be stupid. But I bet you there were other kids that were like, oh, wow, man, it's blowing my mind. Yeah. So, the way the way I see it is, you know, having someone on board flat earth, you know that you know that's that's someone that's well known. I, I believe uh, Logan Paul is like twenty million subs at this point on his channel. Yeah. I understand the uh, the the whole um, game plan bringing him in, but you gotta ha he has to know that the, the, the very foundation, the basics. It's like Bob, and I'm not I don't want to go on about someone else, but. You know, Bob was interviewed about flat Earth. He just couldn't. He he knew, he knew nothing about flat Earth. He was just, you know, they're questioning him. He just kind of like try to avoid everything flat Earth. So, well, he he doesn't. You know, I've watched Bob do some things. He he just does not. I, I'm sorry. I mean, Bob, talented artist. Look, he's nominated for a Grammy. Not many people can say that. Uh, but he does not do well uh, on camera. He does not yeah. do well in interviews. He's just not that articulate outside of the studio. I'm sorry. He's yeah. just not. I well, mean, no, gets... no different. No different. I don't want to pick too much. Same thing with um, Matt Boylan. Yeah. Who, who would have thought? I mean, I was, you know, I back in 2015, I was pushing him to, to take point on this whole thing. And it turns out he cannot form a co coherent <laughs> thought. He's just so all over the place that he just cannot stay focused. Yeah. And so it just happens. So, yeah, well, that brings me back to, you know, back in uh, 2015, like I said earlier in the very uh, beginning of this uh, podcast, mm -hmm. when I said, you know, uh, this flat earth, it's not going to go away. You know, if, if, if it's not true, it'll go away quickly. But I know it's the truth and it's, it's going to it's going to stay there. And I said it's going to go mainstream. But the interesting thing is, look at the time, the, the timeline here. 
the first one to come out as far as celebrities was Tila Tequila was early January 2006. Yeah. And it was that weird. So what I think is, to be honest, um, there is some, like, for example, for every movie, there's some infiltration to, to make it look bad. We're going to throw a, maybe a control puppet in there to make it, oh, who, who's going to take this a former porn star, a reality star, seriously? So we're going we're gonna to interject her in, into the spotlight because uh, what happened after that was B.O.B., then you had Kyrie Irvin, then you right. had a few other, um, I don't know, you had Shaquille O'Neal, who right. said he drove cross country. I know it's flabs I drove cross country. Then he comes back and said he was just joking. So they're like uh, mocking it. But then again, you know, I, I think what Robbie said, uh, Robbie said it well. It's like you could turn a negative into a positive. And that's oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Again, it, it, I now, the, see, I think the, the opportunity for Logan was wasted. If, if he was smart, if he really wanted to infiltrate, he could have gotten in deep. All he had to do was a little research and everything would have been fine. He could have stayed with us for a while. Yeah. Uh, or he could have taken some risk. I mean, the reason why he was even with us is because he flat earth was and still is so hot that he was trying to use it to jumpstart his career after the whole Japan thing. People forget that. It's like, the, the I mean, Logan was so bad off media wise. It's like, okay, what's the hottest thing out there that I can use that I can you know latch on to hook up to? And and use and it's like all right and we took it. I mean, no different. Li you, no different than um, uh, Mad Mike, for example. I mean, there's so many things that have happened. Uh, Mad Mike, the Rocket guy. You know, he had no interest in flat Earth. He was like, you know what, flat Earth is hot, and if you know, maybe I could hit him up for some money. And we gave yeah. him eight thousand dollars, put a giant sticker on his rocket, and the media just like he has his own documentary that's out right now. Yeah, that's what that's what really bothers me about Mad Mike is. You know, I know the core of, of the, you know, the, the first uh, Flat Earthers. You know, you have uh, D. Murphy, 25, you, Matthew Boylan, Eric Dubay. Yeah. And then, again, this guy just seems like a bandwagon jumper. How does he get from not being part of, of anything, knowing, not knowing who he is, then all of a sudden he's, he's propped up on mainstream, which really ticked me off because, like, who's this clown? And I'm going to call him a clown because, again, he is a, a bandwagon jumper. Oh yeah, uh, just all gimmick. It's just like he's just a big gimmick, you know. That's yeah. all he is. Well, he he, as a matter of fact, most people don't know is that he went to the Denver conference to protest it last year. I didn't know that. Oh you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. He his whole intention was to was to stay outside in the parking lot with his rocket. You know, he he brought it with him and he was wow. going to protest it with like a megaphone. And uh, Robbie and and some of the guys like, why don't we just bring him in? Why don't we just ask him to come in? He, we're not. He's not going to get up on stage and speak. You know, it'll it'll shut him up, and you'll get some. You know, we'll get this rocket guy, and it worked. They asked him; he didn't even blink. It's like, yeah. And then this year, he was supposed to do the same thing in Denver or Dallas. He was supposed to protest in Dallas. He never showed. So yeah, just uh, just wish yeah, you're right. He's, he's a band. He's a bandwagon guy. And well, I'll give you a quick one, real 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 fast. Which is, there was a radio station that called me out in uh, St. Louis, and they said, "Yeah, we we'd like you to uh, come on and talk about flat Earth." Just so you know. We've had Mad Mike on twice, but we're just not feeling it. Meaning that Mad Mike was kind of going through the motions, but they felt in no way, shape, or form that he had any conviction in Flat Earth. As a matter of fact, um, if you watch closely, you know, because he did get on Daniel Tosh, you know, Tosh, Tosh.0. Mm, yes. And Daniel said in like the first, I don't know, 20 seconds of that interview, he, you know, where, where Daniel says, I don't think you believe that. Daniel's a very smart guy. And I think he saw, you know, he interviews a lot of people and like he realized that that Mike was in it just for the fame. Yeah. Yeah. So. Very sad. Very <laughs> sad to see that. And again, you know, you have people, you know, putting a lot of time and effort into this. And this guy just, you know, again, like you stated very well, bandwagon guy just jumping in and just wanted to be on TV, wanted to be famous yeah. and heart and soul not really into it. And that that's a shame. And that gets back to to you. Uh, again, getting back to the Logan Paul thing is where you put so much into it. This goofball just, you know, he gets he gets a position on stage where he just he doesn't he's done nothing in, in the, with the Flat Earth community to deserve being propped up. I again, I understand he is a prop to get attention to it. I can see that, but again, it's a lesson learned. And, and, and Robbie, if you're listening in, you, I'm sure he's going to hear this. It's going to be passed on to him. I'm not bashing at all, pal. It's not about that. It's just. We're, 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 you know, just brainstorming here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I mean, Owen Benjamin was a little different, for example, because Owen Benjamin, who who did the comedy routine at the conference yeah. this year, he went through his whole journey online 
and you know posted a lot of stuff and he absolutely went from the typical non-believer to holy smokes my my world view is being shattered and you know that that was the that's what we probably should have wanted but our standards weren't as high a year earlier with logan uh you know logan all of a sudden and again you know logan kept it an absolute secret he posted nothing on social media until he actually showed up and then in fact not only that he even brought in a fake girlfriend i think he's gay personally <laughs> not, not that there's anything wrong with that but I, I he brought in a fake girlfriend from uh, australia which was even weirder he flew her in for uh for the for the shoot how wow. weird is that and to to create the docu you know the the fake romance behind the scenes yeah yeah just add that that side side show the thing yeah. about this what really bothers me and i i i was gonna say i said to myself i'm not gonna bring this up but i'm what? gonna bring it up what really bothers me about logan paul mm -hmm. is a lot of people actually all these millions of followers these young kids became flat earthers and now they jumped off because he they realized he was just joking that's something that really uh, uh bothered and me I, 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 it bugs me too, but at the same time, if they were so quick to jump off, then we didn't need them. Plus, remember, if they're yeah. so young, they're, the, the curious ones, they're going to get into it. Remember, we skew younger anyway. So there's there's something out there called the, um, I think it's the eighth man effect. I, I think it's the eighth man, not the seventh man, which is if you hear a topic randomly from people unsolicited uh, throughout you know a course of a days or weeks, by the time you get to the eighth time you've heard it, it's kind of like a subtle form of peer pressure. We kind of like you hear you hear about a show. It's like, oh wow, it's a great show. Oh, it's a great movie. And then finally, it's like, oh fine, I'll freaking watch it. Right. Same thing with Flat Earth. Uh, so you know, if the kids jumped off, I'm not worried. They'll jump back on. Yeah, and that's the whole thing is it's being introduced to them, and they'll they'll realize that Logan Paul is just a goofball, anyways. As they progress, hopefully, and get older, and and, and just exactly. I mean. Let, 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 let me end it, the Logan thing with this. Yeah. Johnny Knoxville did it better. He did it sooner. Yeah. And he, he did it classier. I mean, for God's sakes, the, the MTV had that show running for years. And he made multiple motion pictures. And it was just a shame that he got out of it. Uh, I, I wasn't a huge fan of the show. But I'm just saying it did better than, than what Logan ever did. And that, But YouTube fired up after the Jackass team retired to where there was this gap. It's like, who's doing pranks? <laughs> Enter kids like Logan. Yeah. And, and one thing I want to get on about is, and of course, you know, I was going to ask this with the, uh, the connection with uh, Patricia Steer. Yeah. And of course, everybody knows uh, the long running um, live streams you guys had together. Talking yeah. about many subjects, flat earth and, and beyond. Just want to get your perspective uh, from the start to basically to where it's, it, it is now. And just get um, your take. Patricia and I, I currently aren't speaking, uh, mostly because of the Denver incident with Logan Paul, because, she, you know, we, she expected that I was going to give her exclusive rights to the whole thing before it went down. And that's not a chance I was willing to take, because like with anything, you know, if you want to keep a secret, you don't tell anybody period you know three people what's ben ben franklin saying uh how do you keep a secret between three people you kill two of them <laughs> you, you don't it's that's 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 his quote and it's absolutely correct yeah. and that is i would have told her and she would have told others she would have told david or told robbie and the next thing you know there's a freaking intervention in my room and they're not letting me get to my luggage i didn't want that to happen and i knew that she would try and i asked her i go would you try to talk me out of it if i told her? and she was yes i go well there he is there's your answer right there um, and I know she, she's a very particular woman. She wants things a certain way and she wanted her award show to go a certain way. And I don't blame her for being mad. Uh, now holding a grudge when I was vindicated on the world stage by everyone, eh, it's fine. You want to hold a grudge, uh, you can hold a grudge. Um, but you know, we did a lot of wonderful shows together and, uh, I know that she took a hiatus for at least six months and I know that she's back in it. Uh, but she's not back in Flat Earth. She's doing sort of a self-help video series, and I have not watched any. Uh, no offense if she's listening, but, I mean, I, I, I treat her the same as anybody else. It's not doing Flat Earth. If you're not doing Flat Earth, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm already inundated with Flat Earth things. I don't have time to watch it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, she, she did a lot of work. I wouldn't have killed the channel 
but the I understood her breaking away from YouTube. Uh, and the big thing was, is that she didn't follow one of the biggest rules of the internet, which is don't feed the trolls. Don't do yeah. it. Unless you know what you're doing, <laughs> unless you absolutely have the thickest skin ever, don't feed the trolls because she was a triple threat. You know, there was a lot of things, you know, there was a lot of trolls that would want to go after her for, for various reasons. And she read every comment. A lot of people don't know that either. She read every single comment on her channel and sanitized them. If you wrote something bad about her, it wasn't going to stay up very long. She moderated her own channel to a microscopic degree. She even went to the point she became a moderator on my channel and asked me if she could like start sanitizing comments on mine. It's like, you realize I have over a thousand videos now, right? And she goes, I don't care because people were saying bad things about her in my comment section yeah. and she couldn't take it. And so during a particularly bad week when her ex-boyfriend was making videos about her and Eric DeBay was making videos about her and the trolls were making videos, she snapped. And I don't blame her. And, but at the same time, you can't, that rule, I mean, th there's a reason. I do not read the, the, the comments in the, the comment section because I want to be able to sleep at night. If I read all the comments, and in, in, I would be in a fetal position with a bottle in one hand and, I don't know, the, the, the TV remote in another, watching the Hallmark Channel, trying to cheer myself up. It'd be, it'd be awful. And so, and I told her this every few months. You know, because she'd get really, she'd have her bad days. And she never showed it on camera. She had her yeah. bad days. She's like, people are awful. The internet's a horrible place. I go, yes, it is. Yeah. It's a terrible place. I've watched it. Look, I'm old enough. I was there when the first forums came out in the 90s. And it never changed. Once the Deja it, News, right? The what? The Deja News. Well, well they, one, one of those, yeah. Yeah. But the, the point was, is that young men, when they figured out that they could use an alias and say anything they wanted without any repercussions whatsoever. It was game on. I mean, people with bad childhoods just started railing to where my joke, which I've modified over the last couple of years, which is you can make a video about puppies and kittens playing in a children's cancer ward <laughs> with, with piano music. And within a hundred hits, someone's going to come in there saying, this is effing gay, unsubbed, I hate you and everyone, including your religion. Yeah. I mean, th that's that's the norm. I mean, find me a video that can make it to, I think the most I've ever seen is maybe 150, 180 to nothing, thumbs up to thumbs down, before somebody comes in and just thumbs down because they can be the first thumbs down. Yeah, I, some I had that. I've had where videos, I know like 200, 200 likes, zero this, like someone wants to be the first to dislike it. But yeah. the thing is this, let, let's be brutally honest here, Mark. You're, you're absolutely right about how people are. Um, the way people are in person and behind the scenes is, is what they say to you in, in your face and what they might think or tell someone else is a whole different thing. And yeah. what it comes down to, when it, make, when it comes to making videos on this topic, very controversial, of course, to uh, unfortunately to a lot of the public is flat earth. You got to be thick skinned. You're going to oh, be God. insulted. You got to, or, or just not, or just not read them. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like you said, but, not read them at all, but, but that gets in, in, in the field of, you know, uh, the infighting, you know, and oh, this yeah. is, this is one thing I want to ask you about because, um, well, I don't want to go on too long. I, I want to ask you about this. That's fine. Your, your, your thoughts on the infighting and my, I'll just say this, my perspective is some people need to be weeded out that are really disruptive. And if we have a diff difference in agreement on certain things, uh, we can do that and just move forward and not, you know, talk bad about each other, that type of thing. So far, the infighting has been verbal only, and it's been not necessarily as destructive because the banter, people, people love drama. You know, my videos, here's a perfect example. My videos, I didn't even allow comments for the first six months because I didn't want to see it. It's like, oh, I don't want people to start rail, you know, because a lot of people just fight amongst themselves. They're not even yelling at me. And... <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Jonathan from Jersey, my, my old co-host from Strange World, he said, you know what? People love drama. They always have. They always will. And yeah. he goes, look at reality television shows. It's just people yelling at each other constantly. It's scripted, but it, people love it. I go, oh, fine. So when it comes to the infighting, so far it's been, you know, I'd rather have people infighting than bored. You know, if, if you're a bored army, it's one thing. If you're an army that starts squabbling with it, which is why I used in the, in the documentary, the, the comparison to the clans of the Scottish Highlands, which is 
glands of the Scottish Highlands, oh yeah, they're beating on each other all the time. At the end of the day, though, they all agree they hate the English, right? Yeah. And that's what we are. You know, we are a lot of different groups inside Flat Earth. Yeah, some are better than others. You know, the, the, I always like to think the cream rises to the top. And I think for the most part it has because, uh, wow, how many, how many metaphors and analogies can I use? You catch more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. However, vinegar does catch some flies. <laughs> so I like that. I like it, that. Yeah, the ending there. That was that was good. One one thing I'll say is this: we I, I look at it this way, Mark. Not to yeah. cut you off, but we all have our strengths and weaknesses as flat mm -hmm. earthers. Some people, for example, they're they're um they're they're better for presenting on stage than others. Some people are doing better showing. Like for example, I think like with me, I like showing uh, talking and showing uh, on a video format. Uh, covering topics of the flat earth. Some people are just more radio based. Some people are more like television based where they break mm -hmm. things down. Uh, again, radio, you're, you're more detailed TV style where you just draw the picture and you say less, you just show on a screen like, like I do. Again, we all have our strengths and weaknesses and uh, you know, it's okay to disagree on everything on, on some, on some things. I said it a million times, no two people agree on everything. As long as we, uh, we we're on the same foundation that we, we were that we're not monkeys living on a spinning ball that's hurling to right. space. That's the foundation we should work off. I I didn't see people fighting at the conference, and I've got and I've gone to a whole bunch of different conferences. You never see people fighting in real life at these things. It's you know yeah they they disagree about some stuff. It's like oh I'm not into that. Oh I'm not into that. But for the most part they're very very civil. Uh, the internet you know notorious. You know if you're if you're anonymous you can get away with you know taking shots at people. But yeah. the dissension, the dissension in the ranks, that's fine. It 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 keeps people active and engaged, and I think it works itself out naturally. The if you're too negative, again, if you're too much vinegar, people aren't going to want to spend that much time with you. I mean, one of my old old mantras is, you know, avoid negative people. So yeah, I, if you're I, if you're in flat Earth and you're saying more negative things, you are positive. Uh, you're not going to be hearing from me very much. Yeah, I agree on that. Gotta have a positive attitude, and uh, you know, help each other up. And uh, again, I, I still, I still, I don't want to sound like a hypocrite, but certain people that are very divisive, they need to, they need to be uh, uh, pointed out and basically shunned. I think because it, it does do any good. But again, you know, I'll say, for example, I'm going to say names like someone like Eric Dubé, who I'll say flatly, pun intended, he yeah. does, <laughs> he does fantastic work with the flyer. I don't agree with them other aspects. But I'm not going to bash his flat earth work when it's when it's good, solid work. Right. Just bash him just to bash him when he's doing good work where people are like, oh, I don't like him. So I'm just going to bash his work. Even though it's solid, I'm going to bash him anyways. And that's a problem where it comes to egos and they'll just downplay someone or just because, you know, and I, I try not to do that. I'll just try to be real about things. If I don't agree, like, for example, um, I look at the world as a, a big stage. People like, say, Hitler. Um, it doesn't matter if you're a North Korean leader, um, an Iranian president. These are all Masons, you know, in the world stage, uh, the Russian president, uh, Putin. These are all people working together against us. We're just sure. onto the game. And um, when, when certain people make great flat earth work, then push out, oh, but Hitler, you know, he was fighting, uh, you know, the, 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 the Jewish world order, this, this, and this, when it's a bunch of BS. He was, pro you know, the way I see it, Hitler was propped up by the Vatican, I mean, how clear can it be that he was part of it? And so that's where I have problems where people giving us some good information and then they kind of ruin their, their stance with me when they put out stuff that sure. goes against uh, the grain. And that's, this whole thing is this, flat earth, we, you know, flat earth is very, very important. This is the foundation of all the lives of this world, but we must look beyond it. But again, this is really the foundation of it all. And, and, and once people get this, they're going to they're gonna see the greater deception. That's why I really hammer the point. That's why I enjoy your work and you have uh, you uh, being on my platform to discuss it. Oh, thank you, thank you again. Uh, it's it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, I'm I'm glad we could we could talk about a whole bunch of different yeah. things. Yeah, and that, that's the thing is too. By the way, one thing this is totally out of the blue, and, and I mentioned earlier about that scene from Porky's. This has nothing to do with truth or anything, but <laughs> this is like the funniest thing. I've like heard in my life, I don't want to put it that high, but it was just hilarious. Talking about that scene uh, from Porky's where that, where that one teenager is lying in the bed and then um, you hear the radio, the guy, in the, the, the radio man in the back talking about the stars yeah. uh, locked in the ferment. Hilarious thing. I read, 
um, some comment underneath uh, a video about Porky's uh, just randomly. And uh, it was hilarious. He goes, some, some guy said, yeah, when I was 11 years old, my grandparents brought me and my younger sister to go see Porky's. I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, they thought it was Porky Pig. <laughs> so they're sitting, sure. yeah, they're sitting in the theater thinking they're going to watch a, a cartoon about Porky Pig and imagine the grandparents and those kids sitting in the theater and not knowing what they're about to witness, you know, with all the scenes, Kim Cattrall and everything else. I just, you know, I, like I said, just kind of throwing that out there. I thought that was, that was one of the funniest things, unfortunately, for the grandparents and those kids uh, to, to, to have to deal with that at a young age and a very old age to see, right. uh, you know, Porky's when, again, thinking it was Porky Pig. <laughs> but nonetheless, mm -hmm. Mark, uh, yeah, moving on to, to other topics and uh, any other projects you have, uh, you know, moving forward, any other projects you have in the works, um, anything lined up? Uh, well, you know what? 2020, I'm treating like 2019. Uh, back in January, I had no idea what was going to happen other than the national conference. And I ended up doing conferences in Calgary, Auckland, Stockholm, London, Los Angeles, South Carolina, and, uh, and Dallas. And and plus, you know, and the commercial, which was short notice, and the book thing, which I didn't think I was even going to get finished. So I have no idea. <laughs> I really don't. I know that 2020 is going to be a really cool year. I mean, if if the Jimmy Kimmel thing is is any start, you know, the first week of of uh, January, and we get in there, uh, I I don't know. But personally, me, I'm just kind of playing it like I always do, which is playing it by ear, seeing, yeah, seeing what happens. I think, you know, obviously with all the attention you're getting, which is, you know, extremely important for the flat earth uh, truth to get out there, you know, like, again, the snowball effect and Jimmy Kimmel and the commercial, you're definitely a presence all over this flat earth. And yeah, that, that's huge. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to tell you right now, there are people in the comment section uh, saying this and saying that these people, <sighs> you know, you know, they're, they're locked in their mom's basement. They want to talk about, about, for example, me or you or anybody else making video or content on flat earth when they haven't pulled their own weight. They haven't right. brought anything to the table. And that's unfortunate that they have to uh, cast stones. And, uh, you know, we don't want to give these people uh, much attention, but it comes to the territory, you know. People... Uh, again, yeah, they're, they're going to cast stones. Remember what I said. I mean, seriously, I could make the most benign boring video ever and there are going to be people coming in there and, and going off on a rail about how much they hate it yeah so again yeah but you're you're absolutely right it's like look do do what i've done <laughs> pull 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 your weight generate some content do do something and for all you know all the critics out there if you think you can do better by all means step up to the plate uh, yeah. I'd love to, you know, which is why I'm so happy when I see other people getting interviews, you know, people say, oh, you know, are you, you're jealous for, you know, DIT or H. It's like, are you kidding? I love him going out there and doing stuff. That's awesome. Cause it's a completely different style from me. Yeah. I wish that, that more people would, would get out there. And I, I know it's not easy to do. I mean, he's, he's braver than me because he's got more to lose than I do. You know, I never got married, never had kids. So I put myself in a position to where there's very little peer pressure that can dissuade me. Other people, you know, they have to, they, you know, they've, they, they're up against a lot more um, adversity than me. So yeah, yeah, no worries. Yeah. Again, the comment section is they're going to be what they're going to be. And by the way, anyone that, you know, usually nine times out of 10, I can only tell this from experience, the people that come at me, they're Eric Dubay's people. It's, yeah. it's, it has not changed in four plus years. Yeah. Eric, Eric has Eric started that back in the the, the whole COINTEL Pro marks a government agent that whole thing. Eric started that, and he because I wouldn't you know do what he wanted me to do. It's like who are you? I don't even know you. You're not even in the United States. And yeah. he he started and it and these people. I will say this. I will say this about Eric's people. They are dedicated. There are some people that just his channel's been burned down what three times. Was burned down for hate, hate speech, and he uh, he just keeps coming back. So it's all right. It's yeah, fine. and that's the thing is, you know, <laughs> I think it's like projecting almost like you know with his connection with the Infowars with his dad, and you know uh, I seen before with Jason Burmis working with his dad in the past. So uh, there's always this type of connections, you know, and uh, so mm. people can you know what I, what it comes down to me. Uh, what as far as I see it, Mark, mm. everybody else listening in. 
I think we should always look at the content of someone, um, take what's good, leave the rest. You know, for example, you know, I said this to Patricia when I did a podcast with her. We did three or four together. I always say this, look, if you, you know, because I've been called the shill by so many people. I made the list by some guy in the UK, the biggest shill. I think it was 2016. They had a, a, a top 10 list. I made it number one. So what it comes down to is this. Even if, for example, if I'm a shill, Mark, or you're a shill, take the good information, leave the rest. You know, it, I think people are concerned like, well, I don't want to follow Russian Viz or, or Mark Sargent because they might be shills. I think they're like, well, I want someone to just spoon feed me information about flat earth, and I don't want to have to think for myself. I just want the truth from one person, and I don't want to think anymore. I don't know what their issue is, but again, listen to everybody. Take what could be proven. What can't be proven, toss it aside. And, yeah, you're absolutely right. And I have, I have asked anybody who has spent time with me, and I have made myself as publicly available in person as you know, as, as possible. And if, if you're in the Seattle area, you know, ask, you want to come to the island. If you spend 10 minutes with me, you will know that I am in no way, shape or form a sort of government agent. I am way too much of a dork. If I am, I, and I've said this, I know I joke about it. I am the greatest secret agent ever. That's <laughs> because, and, and plus also the other thing is what's my end game? Cause I've been undercover now for five years so where 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 exactly am I taking this? Where, the, the thing, and I don't, by the way, I do not believe there are any shills in Flat Earth at all because the, the telltale sign is they would have to go off-road. They would take it, take it, take it, and all of a sudden they're off in a completely different direction and they they discredit it. Like, uh, you know, like like go all of a sudden, you know, a guy blows up a library or, or shoots up something or something like yeah. that. That's, that's what I was always worried. In fact, it was a joke between Patricia and I. Which is, you know, sooner or later, you know, if it was me, if you wanted to completely destroy Flat Earth, you'd create a Flat Earth Antichrist. You know, yeah. someone someone that came out of nowhere, you know, kind of like Obama, right? Came out of nowhere and all of a sudden, you know, gets this huge media push, but he's got no backstory. He's got no, there's no, there's nothing, like you said, no, there's no legwork, you know, to, to no, there's no reason for him to, him to be that far. But we've never ever seen it. And we're coming up, you know, the clues are going to be five years old next month. Yeah. So if look, if I'm I'm making if if I'm going a different path, please tell me where. Tell me, tell me why. And people they they don't. They they always come back. It's like, well, you're just too much of a goof. And you're not you're not as serious. You're not as as focused. I was like, come on. It's like it's this is me. This is the reason why I I there's a there's a wonderful article out there by a guy in new zealand and and i did not read this it, was, it wasn't until this year because I, I was wondering it's like why is media talk to me it's because he said literally he, he goes mark has a goofy warmth that's instantly disarming and i and i go wow i've never read that before and so i started asking people i go goofy warmth goofy warmth and they're going yeah yeah that's it i go yeah i'll take it sure <laughs> why yeah. not y you know mark you know what's funny is um i kind of see what you're doing correct me if i'm wrong i don't i don't want to say this Without uh, being correct, and, and again, if I'm off base, tell me. Like for example, um, the way I see you is like if someone like like uh, pounds you on a topic. Oh, you're a mason. Oh yeah, watch this. I, I'm maybe I'll throw in a little masonic hand sign just to just to feed into <laughs> that. You know that type of thing. Yeah, and, uh, you know that that kind of thing. It's like it's like as a, it might be off topic here, but like as a professional wrestling fan, like you know when they're uh, the fans in the stands are uh, are, are, are are chanting boring, boring. In the wrestling industry, you know what they do? They say, we slow it down even more. We're not yeah. going to let people dictate how we operate. And that's the same kind of foundation um, I try to be. I think you might maybe. I don't want to speak on you, yeah. your behalf. No, but no, you're, you're absolutely right. There, there was a line from um, the, uh, the Tom Clancy movie, uh, Clear and Present Danger, where the president was, you know, they were going to tie the president to, to drug dealers. And he said, give them nowhere to go, which is if they ask if, if you guys were friends, no, you say you were good friends. If they say, were you good friends? No, we were lifelong friends. You take you give them nowhere to go. You, you, yeah. you take the accusations out of it. And so, yeah, I get, a, I've been accused. Oh my God. I've been accused. Of, I had a list, which I read in Raleigh, which was in part, it was actually in the deleted scenes in the documentary. Uh, I had a list a page long of all the different things I've been accused. Of. And of course, so many contradict each other. You know, an agent for literally every alphabet group you can think of Hollywood producer for multiple studios. 
um, married to Patricia, living with David Weiss, have a kid, an 18 year old Soviet agent with Patricia, wow. who is from the Ukraine. Um, I was even uh, accused once of being a large Jewish woman. It, wow. di it didn't even make sense. It's like, really? It's wow. like, because I'm a pretty big guy. I know I look small on camera, but I'm 6'2", about 230. So, yeah. I, I you, know, you, know, you know, Mark, the way I look at it is this. I yeah. think some people out there, they just want to put uh, create some doubt. Just like, for example, someone might be a supporter of me or you, and just someone throwing in an accusation, like, wow, you know, Mark Sargent or Russia Vidge or whoever is putting out good information, but that little... Uh, that little uh, information put out there is like putting a, casting a shadow of doubt on that person. And that's the whole point of, I think what people try to do yeah. is, is just, you know, have some power. They, they want to make themselves legitimate, make them feel, uh, make themselves feel special. I don't know what their issue is. I'm really trying to break it down. What's the problem with people, um, you know, wanting to attack. And like, like I said, the higher you are, the bigger the target you become when it comes to a specific, this flat earth truth. And I said it to you offline, uh, it's, it's like almost, I don't want to say it for you, but it's like lonely at the top. You people get attacked the, the higher you up are on the totem pole when it comes to this. And, and again, I hate to say this, but I'll watch someone like to say, for example, they'll attack me and I'll go look at their channel. They have no content or they'll have like, um, a 10 second video of a chemtrail with no, uh, no audio, no nothing. Right. That's your contribution to truth, Mark. They, right. They know what they're yeah, talking about. You're, you're, you're absolutely right. I do the same thing. And I'm sure a lot of people do too, which is if you, if you get a comment and I do again, every once in a while, go into comments just to kind of take a peek. But if I see a comment from some, somebody just throwing out nonsense, yes. First thing I do, I click on the channel. It's like, look, if you don't have a hundred subs, uh, and you don't have, you're not generating any content. It's like, well, your credibility is gone Yeah. because, and, or uh, I'll, if, if you do, I'll look also who you're sub to. And you know, and it's you. It's it's the usual suspects. Which, yeah. You know, yeah. it's a it's a small group. I mean, literally, I, not to beat a dead horse here, but every interview I've posted, and I've posted, I don't know, hundreds on YouTube, and there's more that I can't post because of copyright reasons. Um, every single video, I'm not kidding you. You check it yourself. You will see at least half a dozen comments saying, "Oh, he should have interviewed Eric Dubay." <laughs> literally and it's like what one what, what good does that do now the video is the interview is long over it's yeah. like why are you even putting it in there well here's the funny thing is i'm going to say this myself speaking on my on my own behalf <laughs> when it comes to eric dubay his he's so monotone he's boring i fall asleep you know watch his presentations the information's good but you got to have a combination of good information you got to have some personality and if not, it's just it's just not going to ring off well. If he goes on on TV, it's just you know he's just not made for TV. Let's just be honest. You have to have some kind of personality. And uh, I'm just going to yeah. say it bluntly, you know. Yeah. And going on, I don't know if you watched. I don't really want to bring him up very much, but okay. Did the um the Eddie Bravo interview? I I called it. I absolutely called it. I said if this thing goes over 90 minutes, give or take, he's fine up until about the 90 minute mark. He goes over, he's going to get comfortable. He's just going to start taking shots at people. And he did. At the, the About 100 minutes, by, by 100 minutes, he was doing literal impressions of Alex Jones, which was not good because Alex and Eddie are friends. And, yeah. and to where they cut him off from a video standpoint, it's like, eh, whatever. If he, want, if, if he wanted to be more serious, he'd be in the States. It's like, there's no, he's not going to be able to do anything from Thailand anyway. He's yeah. sorry. It's just, it's, logistically way too troublesome what who's going to interview you you're yeah. not going to know in fact find me there's only like two people i've ever known that's even met him in person yeah yeah I know, I know of one but they used to work with david ike so you could throw them out the window <laughs> oh yeah that woman <laughs> yes yeah, yeah yeah that's yeah that's that's one of them i think there's one more <laughs> but yeah. that's not a good sign i mean you got to remember that this year most of the flat earth speaking group was on tour we were actually going around different parts of the country, shaking a lot of hands and meeting a lot of people. That's yeah. what you have to do that to, to establish some sort of rapport, some sort of credibility. Yeah, you, you have to have, do it. Like, like you said, Mark, earlier, and you said it well, you got to have more to it. You got to have a combination of the information. You got to present it well. You got to be articulate. You also got to be someone that's, again, presentable like on TV. Like that's exactly how, that's why you became, uh, you became so successful. Um, uh, and, and keep getting the, I don't want to say the word gigs, but keep getting <laughs> on, on TV. 
Um, and, and, you know, again, it, it's so vital, yeah. so important because the last thing we want to we want to see is a downturn of appearances by you, a uh, down uh, uh, downward uh, appearances by uh, someone like uh, David Weiss. We want to see more and more of it, more and more on the mainstream. And again, I'm, I'm I don't want to sound like a hypocrite. Years ago, I would be totally against all oh, mainstream media. It's control. It's control. It's control. But how are we going to again? get this information out there for speaking amongst ourselves. Like, I don't want to say the word like a bunker in, right. in, this, in a little community. we got to get it out there. So you, you guys had, you had the right frame of mind from the start and uh, you know, it's okay. You know, like I said, well, I'll, I'll it, wrong that. it could be, it could be used to our advantage. That That's the base. Like, look, they want to make fun of it. Sure. But it, I realized early on that that's how we got into it. It was because we made, I made fun of it too. Everybody I knew that got into this, they made fun. It's like, oh, it's the stupidest thing, flat earth. Why am I looking at this? And that's how you get hooked. I mean, I, yeah. I watched theaters of people do the same thing. Whereas by the end, I mean, literally by the end of the movie, you know, with the documentary, even though flat earthers hated it, that at the end of the movie, they're going, I have a whole bunch of questions. <laughs> and yeah. I hear this. I love when people come at me I, when I was on vacation down in Florida, table full of people. The, the father finally asked me, it's like, what do you do exactly? And I told him, and the whole table, w w which was bored, two of the kids were on their cell phones, all of a sudden turned and was like, oh, yeah, I got questions. And the questions never stopped. I was like, yeah. great. That's how it starts. That's that's exactly it. Is, you know, it starts from one thing and just it's just like the domino effect. But one thing I'm going to be very honest and, and very blunt is mm -hmm. um, over the years when I was younger, you know, um, I said this story many times on my channel um you know when i when i was very young and i was told the earth is spinning i looked up outside my brother told me i must have been i don't know four or five six years old i'm looking i was like no we're not we're not spinning and um you know then um you know of course we're told we live on a ball and i looked at the flat earth. i knew about the flat earth as a very young a child i said yeah it, it water fall over the sides but then again I, then years later i looked at a globe again I, I just kept saying to myself how does water all this water it's just it's just amazing and I remember, you know, as time went on, I would drive from, for example, say from the peninsula in the Bay Area all the way to San Jose um, and past and beyond and all the way to L.A. And I'm like, when is this when is this actual uh, ball that we're living on actually curve? I used to actually have that thought in my mind, but it wasn't like I'm a flat earther. I'm just like having questions like subconsciously, not saying it out loud in my mind while I'm driving. What is this? What is this ball with curve? So for me, what I'm getting, it was very easy to jump aboard this. But the thing is, what it, what it comes down to is immediately when this came up, there's so many questions. And uh, and obviously, we get a few of them, but there's so much more. And the bottom line, what I would say to anybody, per se, throw away the whole entire uh, a ball earth heliocentric model. Forget that. Like, for example, you see so many memes of like all the planets, and then there's a flat earth disk, and there's more planets. And people need to understand that's all nonsense. They straw men, uh, flat earth. With, with these uh, nonsense memes. And one thing I, I want to get into, Mark, is is as far as, as, as you're concerned um, with doing so much with Flat Earth, is there anything that still that boggles your mind as far as I still don't get this aspect? I, I think I grasp it, but there's still things I'm not quite sure how to uh, uh, put it all together. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There's, I mean, people have asked me several times over the years, you know, what's the weakest argument? Uh, for flat earth and for me the the weakest argument's the same that's always been is that is the antarctic sun which is i you know if you it's amazing how many people don't bring up the antarctic sun to me because they just can't do three-dimensional thinking which is okay how does how do you get a 24-hour sun or 24-hour darkness in antarctica because north pole it's easy that 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 you have no problem but the outer rim you can't do it unless you have some sort of secondary light source or different optics or something that we just don't know. Or maybe we're just being lied to, Mark, and these are just time lapse. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's there's that, too. I mean, there, so you're absolutely right. There's two schools of thought here. Either they're absolutely lying about what's happening out on Antarctica, which is possible. Sure, why not? But you also have to take into account, it's like, okay, what if they're actually telling the truth? If they are, then we're going to think about something else. I always look at I, I look at the worst case scenarios. And that's that's the only one that's kind of ethereal to me. It doesn't. I don't lose sleep over it because, like, look, we've been doing this less than five years. Uh, science had five hundred years, five centuries to work out all the details, and now we're just blowing it out of the water with simple explanations about things. And of course, yeah. social media and high def cameras and all the other stuff. 
So no, that's that's the only thing that um, even remotely bothers me because people have, again have asked, what's the weakest point? Yeah, that, you know, that's that's, everything. That's, that's, that's every, a good point, Mark. One thing I would say is to anybody out there that is on the fence, they're not sure what to think. I would do it like this. It would be like, let me give an analogy. It's like moving. If you want to move to another state, you got to get a piece of paper or maybe get, even get a chalkboard and write the positives and negatives. Right, left, and you know, on one side, you know, uh, the defense for the ball earth. The right side, you know, the, what supports the flat earth. Put it all together. We might not have all the answers, but what's, what adds up, what makes the most sense, and definitely flat earth uh, wins hands down. For example, something, um, you know, I, I try to, it's like, I don't want to say this. It's almost like um, a fight. Um, when, when you talk about uh, uh, flat earth with someone that's a ball earther, you got to arm yourself with as much information as possible. So when you're confronted, you, you have the answers. Like, for example, one thing I talk about is, of course, you know, this, this uh, water rocket ball orbiting the sun at 70,000 miles an hour. How can we see the Big Dipper 365 days a year? And I also throw this in uh, this caveat as well uh, with, of course, Venus, you know, in between the sun uh, and with the heliocentric model. Between the sun and Earth, how is it at night we can see Venus? That's impossible hmm. that we see Venus at night when, again, the, the only way, you know, it's not, it's not possible. We're looking away from the sun at night and we see Venus. So that tells you right there, this, we are in this enclosed system. It makes sense. We're in this enclosed system with the star uh, stars and the so-called plants, which sure. are just luminaries, um, wandering stars that are circling above. I, I like your positive negatives thing. You're absolutely right. We, we use that for all sorts of stuff, including moving. It's like, okay, where are the positive yeah. negatives? Yeah. There, what I like to tell people, and you've heard me say this many times, which is there are way more plot holes on the globe side than there are the flat side way more and because it's a more complex model i mean it's there's there's more material for us to poke holes in and if people again they go for the easiest option if we now have a way of explaining the world that is easier i mean orders of magnitude easier than the heliocentric model what do you think they're going to do they're going to go for the flat model and and you know scientists well it doesn't mean it's right i'm going no no, it doesn't. But if it makes more sense, then give me the definition of right. You know, it, 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 and that's what people love. People want things to make sense. And we now can do that. Whereas, yeah. whereas before, and we can do it quickly. We can do it widespread with social media. We didn't have the chance and we have stuff to back it up. So it's, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words. God bless the Nikon P900. Yeah. And the, the 1000 that's out now. And the 1000. Oh, and the new one, the, the 950. Which is uh, which is coming out the the bridge model between the two with even a bigger zoom, uh, and, and in fact, some guy from a camera magazine wrote that flat earthers should love it, and I'm sure that was leaked from Nikon themselves. You know, Nikon's not stupid; they were probably going, "Why are there so many freaking people buying these particular cameras? Just these two cameras." Uh, and I'm for the topic of of cameras, Mark, because we have to look at the um, and I forgot the the person's name. They were um, basically the inventor of the. GoPro is was based in Silicon Valley. I forgot his name. Okay. But anyways, the whole concept, the whole uh, purpose behind these, for example, when you you know I've I've touched upon this when you watch a Discovery Channel documentary. For example, they're talking about the, the Twin Towers and they're working on a spire um, years ago, and they showed um, the you know this is subconscious programming. Well, the, well, the man's going up the spire and he's doing some work on on one of the towers. They're showing GoPro footage and they're showing the ball alert. So this is why they constitute. This is why they they really push us out there. So while you're watching a documentary about 9/11 uh, uh, programming, they're also you know killing two birds with one stone. They're also pushing the ball Earth, which is as we all know, even Neil deGrasse Tyson stated, you know, uh, it's the wide angle lens makes it right. appear curvature. So they're really they're really uh, implementing so many things at us. And the biggest one is the subconscious aspect. And one point I want to make too, Mark, before uh, I'll let you continue is I made a video about this a, a few years ago. If you look at um, the headquarters of the uh, telescope company, um, I forgot the, the name of the actual brand, um, but they're located in Cupertino, California. And if you look at their entrance, um, it's basically the flat earth, it's Orion, it's Orion telescopes. And if you look at the, if, if you look at their entrance of their, of their uh, headquarters, it's literally the flat earth with a dome entrance, like window above, they're building just like the just like the uh, Boston Globe. Just nice. look, it's it's a flat Earth uh, 
uh, like glass ceiling, dome structure. That's the front entrance that leads to like a standard building. So it's the it's a duality concept. We're called the Boston Globe, but we're going to show you the flat earth model right in plain sight type of thing. So this is definitely these people that um, I'm not saying all the, obviously all the employees know, but the people at the apex of these companies, they're well aware of, of what we live on. Sure. Sure. I agree. Yeah. So there's a lot of that happening. And, um, you know, I've covered this as well. I mentioned George Lucas and the dome. Um, here's a huge thing is when it comes to like, for example, you look at uh, the, the white house itself, look at, look at the architecture and you'll see dome pyramid dome pyramid around the whole, uh, white house. So you have this, the, the, the so-called Illuminati. I hate to use the word Illuminati, but I'll say this, the psychopaths behind all this stuff, uh, this world deception, they're illuminated and they're naughty. That's how you get the Illuminati. Oh, that's good. <laughs> so good. You, you have a lot of that with these news stories as well. Like, for example, um, the first woman, the first a NASA astronaut female in space, her name was Sally Ride. You know, so out of all these people picked out to be the, the as far as females, her name is Sally Ride, like go Sally go, like the song. Um, of, of course, uh, Elon Musk um, being the, the, the man that's heading, um, you know, this expedition to Mars, supposedly with, with SpaceX right back, um, to Werner von Braun, the, uh, the, the, the book. Uh, of yeah. NASA and his book, uh, project Mars and the expeditions led by a, na a man named Elon. So you have, uh, you know, the head of NASA, you know, uh, writing a book about, you know, the, the head guy. Uh, the exploration of Mars is a guy named Elon. So what are the chances a guy, a guy named Elon in, in, this, in this book by the NASA head, then years later, you know, in 2015, 16, 17, 18, all the way to 2020, you have a man named Elon. What are the chances? His name was John or right. Steve, but Elon. So there's a lot of interesting connections when it comes to um, how things are mapped out. In, in this world stage and it's definitely uh, a, a world stage and uh i'm going more and more about that i just want to get your opinion uh and your thoughts on on this world stage and overall again we talk about flat earth a lot but the whole aspect of this deception and the people running the show and getting your thoughts on um again um let's just let's just put it this way this scenario of yes the world's awakened to this flat earth where do we go from there <sighs> Well, I've gotten kind of mixed feelings when it comes to that, because if the world does wake up the way I think it's going to, then, you know, I, I've talked for years now about the hundredth monkey effect, and I don't want to get into it too much. But uh, if you guys don't know what that means, you know, it's, it's when a particular organism has a mass awakening, a mass consciousness shift after a certain number it's like 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 they're all being updated simultaneously and we saw this with monkeys some years ago and i know that science after they were the ones that did it you know it says oh well no it was, it's more of a myth it didn't really get confirmed it's like no 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 science backs away from stuff that's too weird um but when it happens i think that civilization is going to change and i i don't i don't really know if i can say any more than that because i'm not sure what that means meaning you know, if we all of a sudden, if more people realize that we live in some sort of building, if we, if all the world is a stage, then how does everyone act towards each other? And if we act differently, do the makers or maker or whatever you want to, you know, the builders of this world, do they intervene? There's a, there's an old saying, I don't know where it came from. And that is when all the students are seated, the teacher enters the classroom. And I'm not exactly sure because that wasn't the case in my school, but you know, maybe in private schools, I'm not sure, but that's what I feel is kind of happening. We we're in this weird sort of science fictiony zone now, uncharted territory where our civilization's never been before, but I think other civilizations have been before us. You know, again, we're not the first people to rent this apartment. They're obviously older civilizations that predate our history by a long time. So the question is, what happened to them? And are there remnants, you know, coming around? And, and uh, you know, are there rules that they have to follow? But what happens to us when, when everybody, you know, when more people believe in it than don't believe in it? I think there's, you know, this mass awakening, which is why I'm, you know, I'm gunning that 2020 is, is that is part of that. Because we are, and I'm not going to say the public is dumbed down 
uh, something I've come up with, I think they're numbed down, meaning they're given so much junk food media that they don't know what the good stuff is if it was right in front of them. But uh, but they do believe they do seem to to latch on to literal things, the the simple, the lowest common denominator, kind of like uh, 9-11. You know, 9-11 resonated so much because it was 9-11, right? You know, the emergency code for the United States phone system. Uh, 2020, everybody knows what 2020 is. I don't care what education level you have. 2020 means something. It means clear vision. It means clarity. It means 2020 hindsight. There's all sorts of things we do that have, you know, you know, mentioned 2020. In fact, there's a, t you know, the television show on CBS. Wait, was it CBS? Uh, I can't remember which network it was. Somebody tell me. NBC but, or CBS. I think it was one of the two. Yeah. Yeah. yeah CBS or, or 2020 or 60 minutes. Doesn't really matter. The point is, is it's symbolic. Yeah. 2020 as a number is very symbolic uh, in our culture. And I think, you know, if you are the powers that be, the people that run this place, not the ultimate people, to, but the people that run our civilization, you're going to use that to your advantage somehow. Yeah, and I, I you know, guess again, you know, I, I don't want to, I, I don't want to drag it out too much, but I, I do think that we are being helped. If you wanted to stunt flat earth, if you really wanted to shut down flat earth, you could have done a lot more. You could have made it to where YouTube never recommended it. You could have made it to where Google never filled in the search bar with our stuff or the media, you know, quietly make sure that the media doesn't cover. You don't make Jimmy Kimmel cover this or National Geographic or popular science or the commercial or any, any of that stuff. You don't let that happen. And yet they, in fact, the, the resistance has very been token at best. When Neil Tyson went on Comedy Central and dropped the mic and did all that thing, he didn't bring on graphics. He didn't bring on uh, animations. He didn't even, I mean, he just did a stupid six, seven minute monologue that was way over the heads of the people that were that were in that audience. And he- More evidence uh, anything, just exactly just a monologue, that's it. Yeah, it was just a monologue. He yeah. could have showed the Himawari satellite and that would have convinced the audience right then and there on national television. Why hasn't anyone run the Himawari satellite as a, as a graphic? I mean, we keep hearing it mentioned, but no one's actually you know using it when they should be. They're not bringing their A game. It's like we are doing the legwork for something else. And I've said this many times, I said it in the book, which was Flat Earth feels like it's the frame for a canvas we have not seen yet. In fact, th that Flat Earth is necessary for something else that's coming behind it. Because flat, remember, Flat Earth is the ultimate open-minded thing. If you get your head around Flat Earth, anything that comes after Flat Earth, you'll get. Because Flat Earth just you know, completely changes how your, how your head works. Yeah. And I think there's something coming that you couldn't just introduce to the population cold. There's, you know, that, that flat earth is, is being allowed to happen. And so why, you know, why that's, that's part of my job. That's what I do every day is stare at the freaking chessboard and, and look at the things. I mean, I, people don't understand how many news feeds I watch every day and look and look and look and read between the lines. Like, okay, what's happening out there? What am I looking for? People forget because, you know, the audience, the people who are listening to this now, you guys are intelligent. You guys are instinctive. You're intuitive. You get a lot of stuff. The average person on the street is the lowest common denominator. They are the general public. They're the ones that laugh every time somebody falls down. So whatever the powers that be introduce into our system has to be at that level. That's why I keep saying the lowest common denominator. They have to get it. It has to be a movie that everybody understands. Otherwise, it's completely lost on them. And you've got to be able to fire it now. Well, now, you know, between high-speed internet, uh, social media, and six billion smartphones, now you have the infrastructure. Now you can do it. Now you can fire out whatever message you want to everybody simultaneously. But you can really only do it a few times. So that's what they're kind of waiting for. And that's what I'm waiting for. Yeah, and I, I agree that? with you. This is like, 20, like you said, 2020. Um, I would use it if it was me. I wouldn't waste 2020. I'd absolutely use it for something else. Yeah. I mean, remember 9-11 was just a month and a day. 2020, that's a whole year of, of ch a chance that you can do something with and and tie it to uh, tie it to a bigger picture. I just, you know, if it was me, okay, if it was me, if I was doing this, let's say I'm the greatest secret agent in the world and I'm the top of the pyramid of the Illuminati. <laughs> I would introduce because I am right. The, um, because <laughs> if it was me, I would introduce because there's only a couple things you can do. Um, I would introduce either a huge celestial event, you know, a sign from God, a sign from the heavens, something like that, where everybody sees it, 
uh, or I'd introduce another civil, an older civilization. I'd introduce a new species because people could people get it now. There's so many science fiction references that whoever you introduce, people has some sort of frame available to them. You know, we have science fiction going all the way back to the the early fifties. Yeah. So whether you're a grandfather or you're ten, you have a movie or a television series that you can kind of base it base it off of. So if an alien, you know, race was introduced. It's not like people would freak out with their hands in the air screaming. They would be going like, oh, wow, they do look like Avatar or whatever. You know, they, they everyone would, no one would be, I don't think any, there'd be that much panic. It would be just kind of matter of fact. It's like, oh, all right. But you can't do that without Flat Earth. Anyway, sorry, I, I ramble. No, what no, else, I, I did the same. Got? Like I said, Mark, I, I did nine hour podcast, not just once, several times. Oh, I can't, I can't go that long. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I do. Have, I do have to go pretty soon. No worries. Yeah, we'll, 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 how much? How much longer do you have? About uh, I only got about like fifteen minutes tops. Okay. Yeah. Just. Uh, yeah. And, and this is an important aspect. Is um, you know, this control system we li we live under, um, and it's very important for people to understand um, this this rig system, um, how people um, behind the scenes pulling the strings are are scripting events, and I mentioned this on a previous podcast. Like, for example, this is so key, so important. So we know what's going to happen next. It's scripted. It's not just random. And it's been planned out years ago. I mentioned before, like, you look at the book, uh, The Titan, uh, that was written in 1898. Sure. And basically 14 years um, after that, uh, the dimension of the ship, uh, the location, the month, um, you know, uh, all, all these things that coincide. Unsinkable ship. Basically, it's, it's, it's like they coincide hand in hand. They're literally telling you through predictive program, what's going to happen before it happens. So they did with books before there were really movies. Then you fast forward to like, for example, to like uh, present day, 9-11. There's so much predictive programming. Right. Um, you know, the groundbreaking, for example, the Pentagon, six years of the day when it gets attacked, um, 33 years after the North Tower was constructed um, uh, with the Twin Towers, 33 years after the, uh, the construction started, the towers come down. That's the same year, 1968, that the 9-11 calling system went into play. George Bush's, not to go into too long, George Bush's uh, a speech about the New World Order 10 years before 9-11. So what I'm getting at is this. We must be aware that these events, everything that's happening is scripted well in advance. And we should sure. look up the signs. We should look for the symbols. And they always put them in movies. So people should be very aware and try to pick it up. It's very hard. There's so many movies. There's so much literature out there that they're giving us hints. And what I'm getting at is whatever's going to happen is going to happen, um, and it's planned to happen that way. It's not yes. just, oh, they just planned it uh, yesterday or a week ago. It's planned to happen this way. These people... The, 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 Ameri the American president from uh, the 30s, uh, um, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, had a great quote, and he said that nothing in politics happens by accident. And that can be applied to a lot of different things. And yeah, you're talking about a plan here that's been in the works for... A long time uh at the very least at the very least 50 plus years to yeah. where which is why i think back then when they finally figured out for sure remember you didn't know absolutely for sure until you had the technology to explore it back in the late 50s and when you figure it out it's like okay we got to come up with a plan to introduce this to the public and it's not going to be quick because yeah. we have to make sure because if the public you know digest this the wrong way they're going to freak out and they have very carefully and very methodically done a lot of moves. And, you know, part of what I do is, you know, when I, when I was building the clues, I was looking at them going, one of the things that gives me legitimacy to, to different conspiracies is, would I have done it the same way and could I have done it better? Would I have done it differently? And every move that they made when it came to the flat earth was flawless. It doesn't appear so at first glance, but it was absolutely flawless. They locked down the the um, the Antarctic. They militarized space. They sunk tons of money into uh, you know a space race, which wasn't a race at all. Um, tried to punch through it for a number of years, and then gave up. And it's like okay. Then they built the infrastructure, basically the communication infrastructure, which took decades to build. You know, it was first with underground cables, then it was fiber optics, and then it was cell towers, and now they've got literally everybody's on it you know 90 more people have cell phones that have than have access to running water literally 
Wow. And so that's they've got it. I mean, everything's ready for whatever move it is. Uh, but it's again, it's intriguing. But yes, the plan, I think that plan was in place for a long, long time. And all these things we're talking about were also built on military technology. People, it's just like the GPS in your car was started out as the United States defense system. Uh, you know, the, the, the internet backbone. Where do you think that came from? The private sector? God, no. That was military the entire way. Everything, all the big advances were military. And who takes credit for it? George Bush. Yeah. Bush said he, yeah, remember that? Yeah. And here's the funny thing is, is uh, the WWW in Hebrew is that 666. So they, they like to encode a, a lot of things, of course, sure. uh, in, in public. Like, for example, CERN, their logo, there's a 666 uh, in their logo. Yep. Uh, NASA is the serpent's tongue, the vector, the chevron. Um, but, you know, when it comes down to it, they, they have this, this world system. What I find very interesting is, for example, you look at a subcontractor for NASA in Lockheed Martin, and they have it's a duality symbol. It's basically two chevrons. Uh, it also uh, is a broken pentagram. Um, and, and also, if you look at Russia and their their space station near patch, it's the duality aspect. It's a flipped over. It's just like the Lockheed Martin symbol, but it's flipped. It's the mirror reflection. It reminds me, and you'll know this, Mark. The Transformers, the yeah. good guys, have their their symbol one way. You flip it over. That's the Decepticons. So you have the Autobots. And they're the good guys, and you flip over the, the duality aspect, and this is the world, and this is um, you know, the matrix we're living in. It's definitely a matrix where, you know, it's a, a two-headed snake. All every, you know, it's all controlled by you know the, the one body, and, and that's yeah. very important for people to understand. And this is why this truth is so important, and I, that's why I cover so much different aspects of it: flat Earth to shooting hoaxes, uh, fake bombings, fake this, fake that. Sure. Because if you let things happen by random then you have no, you lose control. That's why they have to fake the news, uh, 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 you know, fake shootings, fake bombings. And does it mean, it's like this, this analogy is the best one I can come up with. It's like watching a divorce court on TV. There's millions of real divorces that take place, but all they show on TV are made for TV productions so they right. can control them, put the commercials in, TV time. Same thing with reality shows. So basically everything literally on TV is fake. Um, anything that's real will have like a blip in the screen, a cover for a minute or two, and that story goes away. It's that simple. Everything on TV is about telling you uh, how to dress, what hairstyle to have, what to eat. You know, vaccines are safe. Fluoride's good for you. Uh, everything. They're bombarding us at every single level, every single angle. And uh, it, it's really amazing when you're awake to it all, you get the big picture. And once you realize it all, then you realize the truth and the truth sets you free and you're not going to buy into a news story that's headlined uh, uh, from Iran or Russia because you know they're all working together. And right. on that, Mark, I know I, I I want you to conclude this. I want to thank you for joining. It's been about 10 or 15 minutes since we uh, since you said you wanted to, you had to leave. Yeah, um, I, gotta go. I want to again, thank you so much for joining, um, joining me on my channel, my platform. Definitely subscribe if you haven't already. You should be to Mark's channel. And again, thanks so much, Mark. And I want you to conclude uh, this podcast and uh, with anything, uh, any closing statements that you might have. Uh, yeah, for, you know, obviously for the people that are already into Flat Earth, you, you know where I am and, and you know what I do. Yes. Um, for the people that aren't into it or hearing it for the first time or are, you know, really kind of, you don't know much about it. You don't, don't believe a word I say, you know, who am I? I'm, I'm probably just some insane guy, right? I'm, but get to remember, I'm not here to convince you. I'm not here to persuade you. I'm just here to give you some different things to think about. And but, you know, I'll, I'll I'll end it with this. You know, if you like your life the way it is, if you wake up every day and thumbs up, everything is awesome. Don't look at it. Don't do it because it's a rabbit hole that is irreversible. Once you go down it. It's why the first chapter of the book is called literally called Look Away. Because once you go down it, that's it. We have you. Uh, we have a 99% retention rate. That's an absolute fact. Find me people that have been in that are now out. Very, very few. Very, very few. Uh, because, when, because you were the one that broke it down in the first place. You were the one. The reason you can't go back is you were the one that tore down the globe. We didn't tear it down for you. You have to tear it down yourself. And then after you've done that... If you're not happy with Flat Earth, well, you got nothing to go back to anyway, so you're kind of stuck. <laughs> um, but yeah, other than that, the the big message is is like, look, it's it's bigger than it's bigger than Flat Earth. It's about 
not believing everything you hear and see at face value. Uh, do your own research and ask questions. That's that's the big thing here. It's like, look, there, there's an old saying, which is uh, trust in God, but count your change, which is very, very true. It's like, look, there's a lot of people that are going to be telling you things in the media. Don't just gloss over it and say, oh, that's probably legit. Because 99% of the time, it's probably not. Learn to look at the news with skeptical eyes. Know, understand why stories are put out in the news. Usually there's corporations behind them or governments behind those corporations or the military industrial complex. Learn these things and you will have a better quality of life. You'll look at it more and you'll understand why things work the way they do. Yeah. And I'll, I'll say this, Mark, one last thing. Yeah. I, I, I liked your, your, what you just said there. Um, I would, I would say this, it's like the old saying with Santa Claus you know, once once you realize Santa Claus is not real, you can't go back to believing in Santa Claus. And that's this world, this this, this uh, matrix. Once you realize the matrix is real and this is everything is controlled uh, from the top, um, there's no going back to sleep. Once you wake up, you can't go back to sleep. But again, yep. Mark, I, um, I don't want to keep you too much longer. Again, mm -hmm. thanks so much for everybody joining in. And again, Mark, I can't thank you enough. And, and everybody out there, thanks so much and God bless. My pleasure. Bye, guys. Take care, everyone.